pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to the provisions of Section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Uh, Mr. Fields has circulated uh, to the commission last month's meeting minutes. Is there a motion regarding approval? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We have uh, six uh, complaint hearings before us uh, today uh, that we, we need to go through. Um, I would ask uh, all those uh, presenting for those complaints and defending those uh, please keep that in mind. Uh, let's try to get through these as efficiently as possible. We're going to take one out of order, uh, a complaint against Sprocket Rockets uh, by uh, Ms. Mixon. Mr. Fields. Uh, Ms. Mixon, <coughs> come up, please. Uh, Ms. Mixon filed a complaint uh, in June, and we had to move it to fit into the schedule uh, regarding a uh, low-speed vehicle driving out of zone on West End between 16th and 18th on June the 16th. Ms. Mixon filed and she's present to speak to it. Do you want me to add to my statement? Yes, if you'll introduce yourself with your full name and then uh, please uh, state your complaint. Okay. My name is Patricia Mixon. I live in the Green Hills area of Nashville. Uh, my complaint uh, is um, we are leaving the pizza restaurant uh, in Midtown and driving out uh, onto 16th Avenue onto West End around 6.37 p.m. on June 16th. Uh, there was one of these golf carts in front of us and the driver turned left, uh, proceeded to drive about five to ten miles per hour in the um, second lane. Uh, it appeared that he was either talking with some pedestrians that were on the sidewalk or trying to see if they would take a ride. Um, he did not pull over to do that. He just was driving five miles an hour or, or slower. And um, so we, uh, my husband was driving. We blew the car horn to get him out of the way and he turned around and gave us the finger. Um, it just so happened that I was a passenger and um, was able to grab a picture of the driver as he pulled into the Hutton Hotel. And I would add that um, I, I, I have another incident actually um, on September 16th. I was driving, so I don't have a um, photo of this, but um, same company, uh, different driver, 11.23 a.m. was driving at 23rd and Elliston. And, you know, I just, so I just feel like, you know, I don't go downtown a ton. I don't go to Midtown a ton. Uh, I'm just, you know, the average Jane driving around, and I've, I've seen this company twice uh, breaking the, the rules. So I think, they're, I think they're a danger outside of the um, uh, tourist zone. And it looks like from your photos, the ones we have are hard to discern, but it looks like you were able to get the license plate. Yeah, I can read it. I could blow that up further, but it looks like L5688 in this. All right, well, thank you. Okay. What, what was the date of the second incident? The second incident was on September 16th, 11.23 a.m., 23rd and Elliston, and it was a, um, a different driver. Different driver. I had a rough description of him, if you want, um, and I think there were passengers in the vehicle at that time so <coughs> do you need me to stay around or yes if you could um i'm sure there's someone here from sprocket rockets who's okay. going All right, to thank speak you. you'll have a chance to uh rebut anything okay <coughs> sprocket rocket is um represented by an attorney All right. I 
and their manager. <laughs> Hi, I'm Valerie Iridium with Sprocket Rocket. Um, as far as the second complaint, I just want to kind of clarify, we are allowed to go to the 23rd in Ellingston. Um, we should have that map. Uh, it's on the boundaries for that. We are also not aware of that second complaint that she has. Um, we were fully aware of the first complaint that she sent in on September 28th, which had occurred on um, June 16th. And before she even filed this complaint, um, we were aware of the driver in the picture. We know exactly who he is. His name is Josh Thompson, and I actually have his permit to give back to Billy because he was actually let go from our company as of 9-1. Um, his unruly behavior was the reason for that. And um, as she also said, he kind of flipped her off, and we also just um, observed some of those behaviors among our staff ourselves. So he just was a bad seed for our company, and we let him go. Um, our owner and founder, Emmett Martin, actually did call Miss Nixon and left a, her a message apologizing for that and letting her know that we did let him go as soon as we policed the behavior ourselves and found out. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give this back to Billy. I think that's it. Yeah, I think so. Mr. Chairman, Sean Henry, 315 Dedrick Street. I'm with the law firm of Tuna to and White. I represent Sprocket Rocket. And, and really just to comment on your own rules and regulations regarding drivers and their driver permits, your rules clearly contemplate that the director uh, can take action to <coughs> re suspend, revoke, or otherwise restrict and not renew a driver's permit. <clears throat> and so in this instance, uh, to the extent that there was going to be an infraction found and a, and a, and a penalty assessed, um, my client went ahead and took care of that themselves. So this driver is no longer in the employee, as you just heard. You have the driver's license back. It's been revoked. We think that should be the end of the story. Thank you. Mr. Henry, do you know if Sprocket Rockets has implemented any procedures to ensure their drivers are staying within the, the right zones? Yes, sir. Then Val Valerie can address that and actually has evidence here to provide you uh, evidence of that. So actually, um, after we got word of Patricia's um, complaint, we and we had already let Josh go, but we had another meeting for all of our drivers, which I brought examples for you. Um, we had them sign the map. And then we also had them sign the ordinance of um, the rules that we're allowed. So I have examples of that for you. And it's for all of our golf cart drivers that we currently have. Um, and then, you know, we do still have their big, the map that we got from Billy. I think it's like 36 by 48 on our, um, on our like golf cart wall where they get their keys. But I mean, I have all of them, but just to show you guys, answer your question. This was after Josh was let go. So the meeting was 9-8, I believe. And so they all sign the map and then they all sign the ordinance knowing that. So that's what's put in place moving forward. So they all do know. Do you have GPS on the golf carts? Um, we do not have GPS on the golf carts, but we do have um, cameras. So we record <coughs> everything. We get the views of the cameras of where the carts are. So um, we don't like track our drivers ourselves, but as soon as we get word of it and we have proof of it, we have to let them go because they are fully aware of the boundaries that they're supposed to be in. So would you let them go if they went out of the boundaries or yep. did you have to have a complaint? Um, well, if, well, we have to have proof that they were out because <coughs> if just saying like, oh, well, we saw you out of the boundaries, how are we gonna know? So if somebody comes with hard proof like the photos, of course, there's the evidence right there. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately you broke our company rules and we have to let you go because that's what you signed and you agreed that you would follow. So it's really complaint driven. Yeah. So there's no. But we we train our staff and our drivers, and they know we like break it down for them as simple as we can. Like these are the hard rules. I mean, they know that we have to come to these meetings, and that um, we can easily be taken off the road if we violate any of them. And that's definitely not what we want as a company. So they respect that, and we. Jeremy is our golf cart manager, and he goes out with all of them and make sure that they know the boundaries and if they have any questions he addresses it right then and there but they are fully trained and aware all of our drivers are where to be if i may add to that i mean this company sprocket rocket takes very seriously seriously their responsibility for their drivers i mean it's not unlike any commercial carrier that has drivers driving trucks 
uh, on the road, dealing with the, in, encountering the public. Uh, you know, you don't want a driver of a rig getting a ticket and, and not taking action against that driver for the risk that it has not only to the public but to your company uh, under liability issues. And so Sprocket Rocket clearly recognizes that. That's the last thing they want to deal with. So uh, they, they take action to terminate their drivers when, they're de when their drivers deserve to be terminated. Any other questions? Mr. Thank Fields? I, who are these email or text message exchanges between that are in the packet? That, that has to do with a different complaint. That's a, yeah, a different complaint. Yeah, that's a, there's a second complaint. All right. <clears throat> well, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Ms. Mixon, did you want to add anything? I do. I did want to confirm that I was called by the owner of the company and he did leave me a message apologizing. Uh, however, the, the gist of the conversation was, thank you for keeping us honest. Please call us if you see this again. And I, I felt kind of discouraged by that uh, conversation because to me, the, the burden of proof should not be on me. It should be on the company to manage their employees and to give them proper training. So um, I, didn't, I don't buy that and I honestly don't see why there's not some sort of stricter enforcement so that, you know, citizens who, you know, I just happen to be in the passenger seat, usually I'm not, I'm driving by myself most of the time. Uh, what are we supposed to do, pull over and, or, or take a picture while we're driving? Or, you know what I'm saying? It's, it sort of puts us in an impossible position and is really compromising the flow of traffic outside of the, the tourist zone. So I, I appreciate that he called, but I don't appreciate uh, being, the burden being put on citizens to take care of this problem. Thank you. Well, it appears that there, there has been a, uh, established uh, by Ms. Mixon a violation of ordinance number uh, BL2014-993, which is the uh, uh, ordinance that uh, allows, allows us to set certain portions and certain boundaries for uh, low-speed vehicles and then of course, we did that, um, and that is um, part of our um, Transportation License and Commission rules, and it's um, set forth in uh, Chapter 6.73. Uh, so um, that leaves us with deciding what, what we as a commission should, uh, should do about that. Obviously, Mr. Henry is no longer with Sprocket Rock Rockets based on the testimony from uh, their manager. Um, and so we have a number of uh, options before us. I mean, we, we could focus the uh, uh, on the driver himself, uh, or we could also focus on the, the company in terms of, of whether there, there needs to be um, a penalty imposed for uh, violating uh, uh, Chapter 6.73. I'm, I'm not certain we can actually deal with the issue of the driver since he was not noticed to the meeting. It appears that he's left the industry altogether. He certainly has a contact to the office uh, with a seized permit. He would, and the other companies are. We, we do have a good working relationship with the companies in terms of who's driving for who. So we would need to reserve that for another day if he chooses to come back to the office to uh, 
uh, have his hired permit. with a different company. Mm -hmm. And that would require a company being willing to hire him and, and him being willing to come in to make ask for the change. Uh, my question would be, did we set precedent in the last similar yeah. scenario where we held the company responsible even though it was a driver <coughs> scenario where they were in the wrong place? Well, in the last scenario, I believe they were still working for that company and they weren't let go. So here the company did find out that there was a problem and, and fired him. I don't know what else they could have done at that point. Right. I'm impressed that they did that because I know drivers are hard to find right now. So I don't know if that, if we can compare those two. And just for uh, uh, clarity, uh, Mr. Fields, uh, the, the complaint was not filed until August 28th. Uh, no, June. no, it was filed June, June 16th. Well, it actually happened on June the 16th. Right. That's what the, I'm trying the to The complaint was actually came to our office on, uh, uh, it started with an email conversation that I have with Miss Mix, and then she filed, I sent her complaint. I think I sent her complaint, but anyway, it came in on August 28th. That's right. The date oh, okay. that, right. So I'm, I'm trying to, to establish a timeline between when we formally, as a organization, got the complaint and when uh, Sprocket Rocket took action. I think to answer your question about whether or not we've set precedent uh, previously, um, I think from a, I think the answer is no. Um, as long as our decisions uh, that we come to are not arbitrary, I mean that's really the only mm -hmm. thing that we need to worry about as a commission, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so to the extent we have ruled uh, in other complaints against uh, low speed companies or I don't think we need to necessarily consider that okay Kurt what are you recommending I'm not I just wanted to bring that up mm -hmm. for discussion uh, because we did have a similar scenario <clears throat> so I want to make sure that we yeah you know, if need be that we're consistent mm -hmm. I agree we were kind of discussing that a little bit at this end, too, and, and I think we kind of agree with the chair. I mean, facts in two different cases may be significantly different enough that they can lead to a different okay. result in the second case as long as the facts are significantly different. So I think it comes down more to that, um, that you would have to find a factual <coughs> distinction um, between the two cases in terms of the training that the drivers were given to avoid this happening. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and if, uh, if the evidence in this case is 100% about subsequent measures, though, uh, that may not be as clear a distinction, I wonder. Yeah, that's why I was trying to set up the timeline between when we got the complaint and when they took action versus the event happening in June and action maybe not taking till. September, but it, it appears that it was within a few days. <clears throat> um, can I can I ask you a question again? Was the was the phone call to you was that after the twenty eighth of of September during that time frame? It wasn't twenty eighth of August. Yeah, August. I would assume August. so. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. August. I would assume so. Okay. And I, I want to explain the delay here. So um, I, I actually was not aware that the golf cart was out right. of zone, and there was it was a newspaper article <coughs> right. with uh, Councilman Mendez, and also we were, we were dealing with some family uh, issues. So yeah. if there's any question why I didn't report it right no. away? It was you know. There, there, there's no question on that. Right, right. I, I just wanted to make sure that that what I'm hearing from Sprocket Rocket matches my thought process in that once they got the complaint, they took action instead of waiting two or three months to do something about it till it became an issue. Right, so now the, I, I, no, you, you the did complaint the right did not thing. go through till I, I have a date of the 20, 28th, or, right? Yeah, so. yeah, thank you. I just wanted to make sure. 
I mean, I do think that uh, it's important that, uh, as Ms. Mixon stated, um, that the uh, onus for um, making sure that drivers are following the Transportation License Commission's rules falls on their ma the management of those companies uh, and that to ensure that they are properly training their drivers and that, that, um, that there are protocols and procedures in place for those companies at the management level to oversee that. Um, and it sounds like Sprocket Rockets does not have that in place right now. Um, it's only after the fact. It's only when they learn about it, they're able to do something about it. And what concerns me is that are we sending the message of if one of your drivers violates it and you have had a blind eye towards preventive measures and one of your drivers violate it, the remedy is fire the driver and you're off the hook. I don't want to send that message. We took pretty strong action against, I think it was Joyride the last time. And I agree, and I would agree the facts, I think, from the presentation brought to us by Joyride and by the driver that time was a little bit more uh, uh, defiant. Mm -hmm. uh, Sprocket Rockets come in and, and laid themselves out, falling on the sword. However, I don't like the idea of just sending the message that, well, fire the, fire the driver, that cures it because that doesn't cure it. What we need to do is make sure that Sprocket Rock and everybody has a general deterrence to make sure their drivers are screened, that they don't flip people off with the bird. That angers me about as much as being out of zone. Right. One is dangerous to the public, the other one's highly offensive. And the one thing we are concerned about is protecting the public and also uh, mm -hmm. making sure that uh, these people who are inviting tourists and other folks to ride in their vehicles aren't uh, offending other folks who are really trying just to get it down the road. What if we considered a probationary period rather than taking them off the road right away first offense if we did if we uh, put them on probation for some time that if we receive any other complaints? I, I'd like the idea of probation and also some accountability of what are you doing to make sure you're screening your drivers better. Uh, obviously, you realize this was a, a driver with a bad attitude, and you were recognizing that while they were working at your um, facility. It only took finally a complaint by a consumer, someone who lives in this community, and I think that's another group of people we need to respect and uh, that live here, who are inconvenienced by many of these low-speed vehicles. It took a complaint by them to finally get that guy fired. Mr. Chairman, I, I must interject. We, we do need to be clear on the chronology here, because that's not true. This complaint was filed on August 28th. The notice to my client from Mr. Field's office came, is dated September 5. My client didn't hear about this until after this notice of complaint was received after September 5. I heard from your representative that this guy had a bad attitude at the place and that had been noticed over a period of time, and it wasn't until after this complaint got to your door that he finally got fired, it sounds like. No, sir. That's not true. Okay. When did he get she, fired? September 1st. Okay. That's the testimony. September 1st, my client had enough with this bad apple, and he was fired. This complaint was received after September 5. That's when they were made aware of it. And the second complaint is even a later date in September. So just so we're clear on the chronology, because I do think, <clears throat> I agree with Mr. Whalen, I think that's important to have a full understanding of the chronology here. This gentleman, this driver, who, uh, and I agree with you, all of them are supposed to act in a reasonable, prudent, safe, and courteous manner. That's, that's required by law. This guy was not courteous. And as a result, he was punished by losing his job. And that occurred before this complaint was made known to my client. So, um, appreciate- How long was he employed with your company? I can't answer that. We, we can answer that, I think. About five months. Mm -hmm. About five months. So, uh, <clears throat> clearly, your rules are established to suspend, revoke, and punish rogue drivers that misbehave. Um, my client did that in advance of you having to do it. Uh, we would submit that 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 that, that is adequate. Uh, certainly, my client doesn't like 
to pay me to come down here and appear in front of, in front of you to help defend them against complaints like this. Uh, this is not something they want to be doing. It's embarrassed when you have to defend against a complaint because you've got a driver that's misbehaving. Uh, we think your rules and regulations that have been adopted by the Metro Council uh, are appropriate. We're trying to follow those as best we can. And frankly, we would love to avoid having to come down here and appear before you. So uh, my client takes this stuff very seriously. Um, they're going to do all they can to make sure these drivers are abiding by the rules and regulations. Again, the last thing they want to do is to come down here and defend. What are the steps that they're going to implement to make sure the drivers abide and are courteous, abide by the rules and are courteous? Well, for the rules, that's the paper that I handed. Sorry. <clears throat> For the rules um, set in place, that's the paper that I handed Mr. Hernandez, and I have them for all of our golf cart drivers. So if you'd like to see them, these are actually copies for you guys to keep. But after we found out about Josh's behavior and then we got notice of that complaint that came in of him being out of bounds, we had a mandatory meeting for all the golf cart drivers where we went over the map once again and then we had them sign the ordinance for the golf carts. And so that's what that piece of paper is. And I have the rest of that for you. Um, and obviously when they come to join us for Sprocket Rocket, they know that we are, our number one thing is serving the tourists and our guests. We are a very tourist friendly company. So they would, in order for us to even consider them, they would have to present with these positive, motivating, energized spirit who's happy and eager. And I, I don't know why Josh behaved that way when he did. Um, over time we saw the negative attitude that he had and that's why we had to let him go. Um, but we definitely weren't aware of that when we hired him. Um, so that's all I could speak on, on how we're making sure that they're trained on, on the, their attitude wise. What was, um, the, what was the date of the training? Well, when Josh got hired, that was probably about five months ago. We don't have that exact day. No, the, the training. Oh, uh, I'm the ninth or I'm sorry, the eighth. So you got notice on the fifth. Mm -hmm. So we had a mandatory meeting for the golf cart drivers on the eighth and that's where these were signed. Okay. Most of them are on the 8th and some of them are on the 9th or when we had them sign it. And I have, I mean, if you guys would like to see all of our golf cart drivers that we currently have, they all, we have them. We're fine. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a motion. Other discussion. I, I would think that we would want to put them on a probation for a certain amount of time, maybe 90 days. If we receive something, then there'd be further action taken. But at this point, I don't know what else they could have done. I'm appreciative of, of someone's taking pictures and bringing this to our attention. I also appreciate, <clears throat> as an owner of a company, what they did to, um, I, I think of what I would have done if it was my company, and I think that they that they did that. I, I also just wanted uh, to make a, a small statement unrelated to this particular mm -hmm. um, scenario, that the complaints that we've had have been outside of what we would consider the true tourism zone. And one thing I think these companies are creating a possible issue with is our shrinking that zone so that the people who live in this community don't have to deal with this kind of scenario outside the, the tourism zone. So that's something to consider, that that's also a remedy that we can take on our own to do. I'm not saying it's going to happen, it's not a threat, any of those things, but it, as we get these complaints and they're continually out, you know, we're, we're stretching the boundaries, we're going places we're not supposed to go, we're no longer uh, infringing on, on downtown traffic. We're now infringing on the people that live in the city. So just keep that in mind. Even, even though, as you're well aware, people do live downtown. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I know, because I... <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we also learned from, from Joyride when we were dealing with um, the complaint brought against them in, uh, back in the summer that they implemented geo tracking for all of their carts, mm -hmm. and um, I don't, I haven't heard um, from Mr. Sizemore how that has gone since it's been implemented. But that that is also another thing that we could consider as a commission requiring yeah. the companies to. Could be a to, rule. 
implement that, that would actually force the, the companies to have greater accountability yeah. on where the drivers are going. I think that's the point in the end is for greater accountability mm -hmm. and, and making sure that, that our responsibility, which is more to the people of the community than it is to the businesses, that that's taken care of. I have the same concern um, that Mr. McNally has about sending the, uh, the wrong signal that is, as long as, after a complaint is received um, to a company that if they fire the driver, uh, that that is, you know, all that needs to be done uh, to address the rule violation. And, and um, you know, clearly something needs to be, uh, something more needs to be done. Something, either we need to change our rules or um, the companies themselves need to be held accountable for the rule violation when it happens. Yeah, and I had one other observation that was initially I thought the company's lawyer and representative were saying, well, we took uh, the appropriate action by dismissing the driver as a result of the complaint. Now I find out they didn't dismiss the driver because of the complaint, so the remedial action really wasn't there. They were dismissing the driver because he was a bad employee before they had notice of the complaint. Um, you know, we have cab drivers that are forced to go to hospitality classes, uh, and you know we don't have that with the low-speed vehicles or the pedal vehicles, and we haven't created a rule of that nature yet either. But uh, that might be a good option. That's something that I would seriously want to consider: is that employees have more than just a good attitude when they apply for the job because I haven't met anybody that didn't have a good attitude when they were applying for the job. <laughs> it's how they're doing it several weeks after they've had the job, you know, and they become vested. So um, there, there's another possibility. I'm just concerned about how you screen these people who are coming into your employment. Um, I like that idea and the hospitality classes given by the uh, Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation, and I believe those are free, correct? Yes, they're free. So. Certainly we could establish, a, we have a working relationship with the CVC as it relates to the taxi cab drivers. Based on what you've described, it'd probably be a little bit more than what they would offer through the hospitality class. If you'd like to have um, the low-speed vehicle drivers to be um, Tested. We actually, the, the, just to remind you, the taxi cab drivers go to a three day class mm -hmm. called Taxi Pro. The first thing they do is they go to the Tennessee Foreign Language Institute. They're tested for the English language skills. Then they go to a three day class. The three day class consists of hospitality provided by the Convention and Visitors Corporation. A uh, second day is on the rules themselves. It's actually taught by a taxi cab driver. And then the third day is a map reading. And it, it's, it's a map reading, not a GPS reading, but a map reading on how to actually, this is Nashville and this is where you. You need to how you need to operate um, I would suspect I would need to speak with mr. Clements and his staff but we certainly would be happy to work with them uh, we would probably I would probably recommend and I don't know why I recommend these things but I'd recommend the staff actually provide part of the training and I think that's probably me to uh, to provide you know a, a few hours training to be followed by the hospitality class um, we there, I'm not sure the ordinance probably would allow it. I'd have to research it, but I think by rule you could probably establish additional uh, requirements. Um, the count that the, most of the ordinances we have anticipate the commission taking additional action to provide for public safety and uh, and public convenience. Can we put that on the agenda for next month? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. If you want it on the agenda, it'll be there. Thank you, Mr. Fields. <laughs> that and perhaps the rules. On but the I'd also say, and here I go again, but if we're going to do that for that, I'm, I'm confident we should go ahead and do the same thing for the pedal vehicles. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. And just create one class that would cover both because the ordinances are similar enough in terms of, um, in terms of the, general, the general tenor of what they have to do and, and so forth. But we could... I'll ask Mr. Clements. He hadn't, he hadn't smiled yet, but I'm assuming Mr. Clements, will, he's still not smiling. But I'll, I will, uh, I'll, we'll meet with him. He's now smiling, so we will meet. And work I think he's out. laughing now. Uh, well. I just wanted to say that um, 673200 does say that. 
conduct of drivers, the driver shall at all times comply with any other requirement adopted by the MTLC by rule um, and refrain from any conduct prohibited by the MTLC by rule. So if you were to adopt a rule requiring hospitality class, I assume that that would fall within that requirement. Excellent. Great, great idea. Thank you. Um, I think we should also put on the agenda the uh, a rule for consideration regarding geo tracking. Mm -hmm. okay. My legal team is eager. <laughs> I just wanted to add, um, we actually have already, e I've been emailing back and forth with the convention center. I believe her name is Shannon. I don't know what her last name is to actually schedule those classes. So I do have emails of us exchanging the dates for us to sign up. So that's something that we've already um, kind of started putting in place to better ourselves. So we Sounds do good. like your recommendation because we're also yeah, trying to get that going for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Her name is Shannon. Right, it is Shannon. What is the code section of the what is it? Well, it's, it's, is it I don't the know. The thing, it's just chapter, it's chapter 6.73, which, which is low speed vehicles. Mr. Fields has the actual board some parts. No, the oh, computer thank is you. Thank you, Teresa. Here's the. Okay. Here's the no, but they're making a motion for right. a violation of the 6.73. Mr. Fields, what's the specific uh, section that the, would, that the complaint is about? The specific right. section that would be, in this particular case, would be the operating area, which is uh, 3, 380, 6.7. 6.73380 LSV shall operate upon the streets and routes or zones established by the MTLC or its staff. Any deviation from these approved streets and routes or zones must be approved by the MTLC or its staff. Any approved deviation must be reported to the MTLC or the MTLC staff prior to the beginning of the operation. All right. I'd like to make a motion if we're ready. And make a motion to find that there has been a violation of 6.73.380 regarding operating area and I would recommend a sanction of 90 days probation to um, and that that probation could be period could be reconsidered at the next meeting if Sprocket Rocket can come in here and show me some steps being taken towards um, the hospitality uh, classes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next, uh, we have uh, another complaint. Uh, this one is against Hat Creek Carriage Tours. Okay. Back in order. Make sure we get way off. Back to the top. Uh, we've had an interesting set of circumstances with Hat Creek. Uh, since we met the last time, it appears that Hat Creek has been sold. I have not received a specific. Uh, uh, I have not received a specific letter or and I've not been able to communicate with the owner of Hat Creek but I did see a bill of sale I can't present it to you because I don't it was not presented to me I was but I was able to view it um, and it did show a bill of sale the reality in cases like that if a company is sold the the certificate is immediately voided so the certificate itself cannot be uh, cannot be sold. And what it basically well, what it says is uh, uh, if there's a change of ownership or title to well anyway if there's change of ownership it becomes the the certificate becomes negated and the permits are no longer exist. Uh, uh, Paul Morrison, the owner of uh, one of the other carriage company, actually has bought the equipment bought the horses uh, as well as the uh, bought the carriages the, the leather and, and the tack and so forth so um, he has indicated he would like to apply to actually operate that company as I advised him that's a situation that the Commission would have to uh, approve the deadline for for the applications was no one applied for any new carriage permits nor another, any new company, so that timeline has passed. I advised him in order for the commission to take any action, they would own the, the commission itself would actually have to take that up 
as consideration. But with respect to Hat Creek and this complaint, uh, I don't. Mr. Uh, Mr. Roberts has uh, some health issues. He indicated he was unable to come to the meeting, and. Uh, since he appears that he sold the company, I think it's one of those things where we would retire the complaint until, if in which he, you know, if it's shown that he's not uh, out of the company. All right, do we need to make a motion regarding that suggestion? Yes. Yeah. She says we do. Unless the complaint is withdrawn. Well, I filed a complaint, so. <laughs> if you file the complaint, then you can withdraw it. Uh, well, let me just withdraw it. Yeah, and then that way, if, if something does come back, it's still an active complaint in the file. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Mr. Fields. Uh, next, we have a complaint uh, against Sugar Creek Carriages. Um, we have a complaint filed by Russell Bassett regarding what he has observed on the street. You will recall on, in September of 2013, we were in a very similar situation where complaints were filed and then cross complaints filed. I was also told just prior to the meeting there'll be five more complaints filed in the morning by one of the companies. So we're in the same situation it appears that we were in 2013 where one company and the other company are cross complaining. Our individuals from the companies, I should say. All right. Mr. Mr. Bassett is present. He also has video that Thank he'd you. like to share. Mr. Blackburn, how are you? I'm doing well. Nice all to right. see you. You doing all right? I'm all right. Good. Um, and I, I don't want to belabor this. I just, uh, because of the theoretical possibility of an appeal, Whenever we've done these things in the past, I've suggested that in order to be reviewed by the uh, Chancery Court or the Circuit Court, the testimony should be under oath. That's never been done here. I'm not complaining about it, but if I don't state it, somebody will later tell me, why didn't you say it? So I just said it. <laughs> I fully agree with you. So, there we are. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, by way of introduction, since I haven't been here since September 2013 or 12 to speak, my name is Russell Bassett. And as a career, I managed restaurants. And I wasn't a restaurant genius, but I fumbled my way up into general management. I've run good restaurants in Boston, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Orlando, Kansas City, and so on. And I got sent there because I followed the rules a little bit better than the geniuses. I understand hospitality and tourism. And I would also like to uh, answer some questions that the board members have asked in previous meetings. See, I broke my leg a couple of months ago, and I've had plenty of time to watch a lot of video of meetings and read complaints. I've learned all your names by watching them. So, first of all, I have a series of eight different incidents I'd like to show. I have them organized by uh, sort of which crime was committed at which time. And uh, would you like me to go over them one at a time? Or, in, you know, I don't want to be here all day either. I don't intend to call any witnesses. I'd like to stand on what I have to show you. Would you like them one at a time, or would you like me to just run through all of them? It's entirely up to Mr. Blackburn and the board. Matters not to me. It's just a matter of time. I think that it, I think it makes sense for you to um, go through them all at once. If, if we find that it's going to be too cumbersome, uh, we can all right. We can go back. All right. Chairman, while he's doing that, we have submitted a number of declarations in anticipation of this very time issue. Uh, and uh, I wanted to show on the record that I'm providing Mr. Bassett with copies of all of these. We have extra copies if you don't have them. Thank Those you. are all, that's excellent. Certainly. Very 
Is this what you gave us today? It's what yeah. you received by email earlier oh, okay. today. Okay. Get that back good. up. Okay. You're good. Okay. Well, let's see that part. I'm on. Second on this, I'm not like a great editor. Shortly after I pulled up, this one of Mr. Smith's farmhands and slash drivers, this is just a few minutes after I got up there. to the next one. Get this area. Mr. Chairman, my for organizational purposes, I'm going to show a video. Perhaps it would be better if I questioned him now, frankly, while the video is still there. Certainly. I, make the decision. I believe the chair gets to make that decision. Yeah. He had already expressed his preference. Yeah, let's go ahead and go through all of the I'm video sure. first. And then that's the chair's decision. Let's, uh, right. let's let him finish going through the videos and you can ask all the questions you want afterwards. <clears throat> this one's May 7th. I've learned to keep a camera going for cover my behind. I know that's really interesting. But Sure. 
to the world? Setting his camera watch. That was pretty impressive. Why aren't you pulling up? jump to a different angle, the same shot, or the same. It's from a dash cam I keep on the carriage, which I actually started that after I got cut off by a cab. And Cinderella, by the way, the lovely white horse. It's a long light when we're waiting for it, too.
I said, why don't you go on to the next video? Why don't you go on to the next video? All right. Let me uh, get back to the next day. Sorry, I've never used this laptop until today. And, all right, this is the very next day. Uh, five, five, two. You can see they're not pulling up. Just <coughs> he knows one other song, too. through your complaints before you um, came here this afternoon and I'm assuming that all these videos are consistent with your allegations and your consistent yes. complaints. Yes. So let's let's um let's hold off watching any more videos as much as I'm enjoying watching <laughs> the videos they are rather appears to be rather lengthy and we only have uh, the afternoon to get well, I waited our, four years our, you know uh, our full docket here so um, why don't you just finish making your oral presentation and then All right. hear from Mr. Black. I do have one request though. May I show one where they're actually interfering with the passengers in the carriage? Uh, what complaint or incident date is uh, that? It should be, let me look my number up here. Well, it's June 24th. So, let me pull that up. Is that the one with the baby carriage? Uh, yes. I know that's not a great picture. That's a dash cam view of me pulling in. You'll note that Mr. Smith directly comes to my carriage. That's Shelly bringing a baby carriage. And this is from the camera I have. Oh, yeah, there he goes again.
step away. Step away from my carriage. You don't need to be here. Step away from the carriage so they can access. And I stand by that. <laughs> That's an oxygen tank she just took out for the next baby. You see the hose coming down? And I know that's a little embellishment and melodramatic, but I don't see any reason for him to be near my carriage. I stand by that. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. You see me anytime. All right. Now, uh, you wanted me to go over the rest of them. They're all very similar. They're standing in my way. They're intentionally blocking me. I'm pretty patient, but, you know, one of the girls was crying from the abuse one night and said, when is enough enough? And I decided that's when it was enough. And I got to tell you, I learned some things watching these videos. I checked as far back as I could the minutes that were posted, the videos on YouTube, and there has never been a cross-carriage complaint that didn't involve the Smiths or Sugar Creek on one side or the other. There is no Southern Comfort versus Hat Creek. There is no Cumberland Carriage versus Capital Carriage. Every single one as far back as 2004 is either filed by him or filed against him. Now, another thing I'd like to point out that, and there's more incidents prior and after this that other people tell similar stories, and I feel that his being in front of that child is gross negligence. And he knew someone was there and he did it intentionally, and that seems to me to be the definition of gross negligence. Now, these problems are especially going to be exacerbated if we have people down there that are out of control. If we have people that cannot control themselves, if we have someone who will not conduct themselves as a gentleman and a professional, then we're going to have this kind of thing. I think it's in the interest not only of the welfare of the carriage operators and the individual drivers, but of the public at large, that we not have such behavior. But at least we can do something about one person who is creating issues. And time after time, that one name keeps coming up, no matter how far you go back or who's arguing it who. And what we've talked about here has to do with safety of animals, safety of the people who are riding, has to do with conduct that should not be tolerated, that happened in front of these people, tourists. We're talking about letting one person adversely affect the image of the city and the carriage industry. That's a quote from you, Mr. Blackburn, all of it. And I stand by that. <laughs> One person seems to show up time and time again, and he's a bully. 
I'm prepared to answer any questions you may have. For now. If you're done, Mr. Bassett, we'll hear from Mr. Blackburn. All right. I have some questions for you, though, sir. All right. Absolutely. What's a monkey boy? I, I intended it to mean a clown, a puppet. It certainly wasn't as foul as the name he called me, Boy Was it, Freddy. A, uh, was it a compliment? Of course not. It was an insult. Anyway. Of course it is. On this video, the first thing we saw was you hurling an insult to somebody from standing on the stage. No, the first thing you saw was his farmhand ranch hand shaking his little hind end in the front of the seat, asking if I wanted to perform homosexual acts as I drive by. And I'm not gay, but it doesn't bother me who is, what is. I might even try it someday. I said it had happened prior to that. It goes on all day. Okay. Y'all just do this for the money, don't you? Um, well, let me, uh, let me ask you a couple of questions, if I may. Certainly. Thank you. Um, first of all, you're employed by Southern Comfort? Generally, yes. Well, uh, you heard, in fact, the announcement that uh, Hat Creek uh, was selling, I guess it's an asset purchase to Southern Comfort, right? I heard that, yes. Yeah, which would mean, of course, logically, that they've acquired more equipment, more animals, right? right? Absolutely. And that happened, uh, we don't have the bill of sale, but yeah, apparently so. uh, in the fall. I really have no uh, business context of what it is. I heard that it was sold out. I heard Paul bought it. I've been on a broken leg. I've been out of touch for a couple of months. Well, uh, were you out of touch back in uh, February 2016? Because that's the oldest of your charge. In fact, the majority of your charges go back into 2016. They do, and I wanted it to be one comprehensive charge so that you could see what we put up with down there. Now, uh, these charges then initially were referred by you in a form that had no names or dates or... or because I didn't want to take anything out on his drivers in particular. And he has nothing to hide if everything he does is above board. Is the answer you can show every video of me you want. Would that be a yes? The first one you filed, in fact, you complained about it and you had to withdraw it and submit a new one that had more specific dates. I was asked to rewrite it. Uh, I've also seen complaints sent by Raymond Throckmorton with no specifics also not done. Sir, if I may ask you just so we can get out of here. Uh, Absolutely. Some deference to the brevity of life. All right. Would you just please answer my questions. Certainly. Okay, thank you. So you had charges that you had going back sometime, all, well, 18 months ago at least, back to February 2016. Correct. And you brought these in the fall, right? Uh, I started Who compiling the them in. Shook, uh, hey, I'm not, you didn't let me answer the question. Was it a yes or no? No, I started writing it in June. And every time I got ready to put it in, something else came up. Stop. So. I was waiting till August, and I wanted it filed for the August meeting. It got put off till September. June of 2016 or 17? 2017. All right. And the first instance that you have a note of here was February of 2016. Correct. All right. Now, the if your employer, uh, your employer's uh, primary competition in this little business community is Sugar Creek, isn't it? Uh, it's not the only one. I didn't say the only. It's the primary one. No that, one has more that's no, permits, do they? Uh, no, I'm aware he has five permits. So if their business were to be interfered with through this complaint process at the time when Mr. Morrison was seeking more permits for all this new equipment that he bought, that would be very advantageous to both of you with us. Uh, I wasn't aware of that deal going on. So I can't answer that for you. I'm not privy to the business dealings. You had, uh, you have shown us videos here. I have more. 
Would you not kindly let me ask my question? And then you can quarrel with me after that. Okay. Now, every one of these I have seen, except for one, appears to be at a carriage stand. Well, I'm on my carriage in every one of them. Correct. That, that's a yes? Yes. Right. Now, the very final one, where you claim that Mr. Smith somehow interfered with someone, uh, those people that were shown there, were those your, your passengers who were exiting the carriage? Correct. Right. And he didn't, he was in the same place and they exited the carriage without him. He, he, he moved into the front of the carriage, correct. Now, that, in fact, was not in the carriage stand, was it? Uh, because they weren't pulling up for me. You are absolutely right. So you were unloading passengers outside of a carriage stand? Correct. That's contrary to uh, a regulation, is it? Oh, uh, it is. It is? Yes. Well, I'm looking at these regulations that you've cited. There's uh, actually, there are 15 of those. And sequence of entry into a carriage stand, I don't find that. <coughs> Is it here? No. No. So why do you want to be in the back? I don't want to be in the back. I want to pull into the legal parking no, place. You were, you were saying move up, move up, weren't you? I, because I wanted to be in a legal parking place. Well, were there other kids in the stand? There were in front of me, but they were not moving up. None of them were. Apparently not, or at least the one that was keeping me from moving up. The most advantageous place to get passengers usually is in the rearmost spot. I have never said that to anyone. I'm but, saying it to you. Is that not true? Uh, it seems to work for everybody else, not necessarily me. Well, you uh, sometimes, uh, in fact, we have several sworn declarations here to verify this. You will go around the block empty just so you can come back and get that. Not spot. true. Absolutely untrue. If you, uh, hey, if there's video of it, let's see it. If you pulled up into the carriage stand in the rear of it, and there are carriages filling it, what would you do? When you say filling it, if I pulled up in the proper sequencing, they, all the carriages should move up to the head space at least one and let the next carriage in. So you're the back? Well, I would be. And then if somebody else pulled in and somebody in front of me pulled out, we would move forward. Mr. Bassett, this is, this is not a rule of this commission or the Metropolitan Government that you're trying to invoke here, is it? No, I actually just want everyone to see what we put up with. And well, we're seeing it. you just said I was cheating. I have two hours of video prior to that event that will show you I was nowhere near downtown. Let's try to focus. This is important. I am focused. Let's try to focus on this question, right? Your problem was that the carriage didn't pull up, but you don't have any uh, regulation or rule of this commission that you can point to that says they're required to do that, do you? No, but... Now, you do have... There is sort of a custom. There is. Is there? So you're trying to invoke a custom or a folk way as a complaint? Well, this apparently it's a custom because he's standing there telling me I was unfair and I was cheating. Mm -hmm. And I do have video to discount that. When you, uh, one of your complaints, I don't think you've shown any video, but one of them was about Mr. Um, Smith and his wife following you and threatening to call the police. One. Yeah, that's incorrect. Try to focus. <laughs> ah, it's your complaint if you want to try to focus. In fact, it's the first one that you filed. Is that your handwriting? Can you focus on that well enough? Yeah, to I have my own copy. Okay. And you said uh, this uh, fellow named Bradley wanted to help you as a ranch hand. Correct. And anyway, uh, that uh, Mr. Smith and uh, Mrs. Smith followed and said they were going to call the police, and you claimed that was disorderly conduct. Would you like to see that video? I would like for you to answer my question. I do believe it's disorderly conduct, and I absolutely believe it breaks the prudent and courteous rule. How drunk was Mr. Bradley? Well, since I hadn't got talked to him, I wouldn't know. 
Mr. Bradley, do you, were you present when this occurred? I was at the point where he ran up the street being chased by them. Do you know that Mr. Bradley had been fired by Sugar Creek for drunkenness? A lot of people have been fired by Sugar Creek for a lot of reasons that never this? seemed to match up. I did not know that. It was of no importance well, we have to me. statements here that that's the truth. Do you have anything to contradict that? That he was drunk? Well, I didn't. Mr. Bradley, I'd like to say something. I believe that's out of order, Mr. Chairman. He can come and say what he wants because the next is going to be this. Did you know what they were trying to call the police uh, for? Uh, they said he was harassing them. How about, you know who Brittany Magram is? Uh, I'm aware it was Brittany Deloche, I think, from the newspaper. Is that, uh, yeah. No, I'm talking about the young lady in the carriage that uh, Mr. Bradley approached with uh, alcohol in his breath and put his hand on her thigh. And that is who? That's Bradley. No, which which young lady with Brittany Magram, that's just what I asked. And I said I knew her as Brittany Deloche and she acknowledged that's her. Don't you think a reasonable thing to do if you had an employee who'd been uh, inappropriately touched by a drunk men to suggest maybe you ought to call the police? I would say if that was a known fact, correct. But wouldn't you say that you weren't there either? You have, um, Mr. Blackburn. Which which uh, complaint are you uh, specific, specifically referring to here? It is February. Uh, First of the eighth in the second filing, February sixth of twenty sixteen. Thank you. Um, harassment, disorderly conduct, violation of twelve point five four point two zero zero. Is what it's in the <coughs> now, and I want to move on here, but you observed this on February the sixth, or were told about it, whatever. <coughs> You acquired this information on February 6th of 2016. Which one are we looking at again? One that's you dated in your own hand. Well, then that would be correct. Okay. And uh, you filed this complaint that we're having to deal with today on October the 10th of 2017. Correct. That doesn't make it any less offensive. Is there a statute of limitations on filing complaints? Well, I'm not here to give you legal advice, or I would tell you. I wasn't asking you, I was asking the board. Well, the statute of limitations for disorderly conduct as a misdemeanor would have expired, yes. But the statute of limitations for prudent, courteous behavior, is there an expiration on that? You said that on June the 24th, um, I think uh, the one that you were talking about, about standing by the passengers, that also was June 24 of 2016, wasn't it? Correct. The one about blocking access to the carriage stand, May 7, 2016. Correct. The next one was May 8, the next morning. Well over a year ago. Correct. But you're just bringing this to the board's attention. I said I'm a patient man, and it just finally comes to a point where you want to stand up and say you've had enough. I've had enough. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> so I have uh, the right to recap? Yes. All right. So, Ms. Marco asked in one of the meetings, what's it going to take to get you to play nice? <laughs> I've been there with the aggression. Why the animosity? And Mr. Uh, I know that's Miss Warren, right? Or there was one. one. Wallen? Wallen. All right. He said, why can't you police yourselves? Why are we in here every six months going over this again? And the question is, has he violated our rules? And Mr. McNally said, 
And this was last year with Clint here. It's time to send a shot across the bow to all the carriage drivers. We are going to hold you to a higher standard, and we're going to spend, suspend it if you violate it. Well, I think it's been the flag is still flying on the pirate ship, and it's not that I have to prove this beyond a reasonable doubt. I just learned this from you, thank you. I don't even have to prove it beyond a preponderance. All I have to do is prove it beyond a mere scintilla that he has been acting discourteous and imprudent. Is that correct? According to Leonard Prater, something like that? That is the standard for the um, decision of the Committee on Appeal. On appeal. Well, I think it's time to do more than send a shot off the bow. I mean, there's no cross complaints. Every complaint is Johnny. It's like the guy that got married eight times and never says, could it be me? So, well, it's entirely up to you, but I've also had people say to me, why just bring us problems? Why not bring us solutions? I'd like to suggest a safety zone from the front of the horse's nose to the back wheel to the walk with no solicitors. If we're going to have solicitors that are going to be the conduct conduit between the tourists and the carriage drivers, they too ought to pass the same standards and have hospitality courses. And if we're going to complain about parking, we should double the rate on vehicles that hold more than nine passengers. Because if you don't, there's a 15 passenger thing down there. You don't know, we might be thinking of going up to Baltimore and buying an old trolley train that holds 40 people and six horses pull it. Where does it stop? So, that's pretty much mine for the day. I would be glad to show you more videos of more recent charges of them blocking and parking illegally, but I already forwarded them to Lieutenant Burke. So. If anybody else speaks, I do have the right to question them regarding this. Is that correct? Um, regarding that subject matter, yes. All right. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for either witness? Either Mr. Bassett or I, uh, Mr. Blackburn's not a witness, but any questions for Sugar Creek? Mr. Chairman, I, I, just for the record, we have provided, I believe, nine declarations, and uh, I wanted to uh, indicate that uh, we would like for those to be made part of the record um, and submitted for consideration. We took the originals that you brought to the office today and we've had it. All right, thank you. And that does include uh, one for Mr. Smith, his response. So that's the only evidence we feel is necessary to prove. I'll be glad to speak to this. Um, if, uh, if the commission wishes to hear from him, I, there is, uh, this, I don't want to dwell on this because it's not directly relevant to this, but I have suggested on numerous occasions, and I would again, that we ought to consider having some sort of alternate dispute resolution for these things so that you don't continue to hear these testosterone surges. Uh, this is like you're in the crease at a hockey game, face wash. And I, I think that would be a useful thing to do so that the court, the court, excuse me, the commission's time would not be unduly wasted. But that's not before you today. I would just say this. What he has shown here completely fails to demonstrate any of the accusations. Uh, the, the first one that he showed began with an insult by him in front of everyone. The, it is, uh, it might be prudent for the commission or the council to consider some regulation of the stand in terms of entry and exit, but there are no rules in that respect. Uh, he agreed that there was sort of a, a custom or a folk way uh, in which um, you're not supposed to uh, go around the, without passengers simply to get the premium space in the back. Uh, sometimes they have adhered to that and sometimes not. Our declaration said that's what Mr. Bassett was doing. Those declarations also have some specific things to say about Mr. Bassett, which aren't the subject of any charge here. 
but uh, might put his behavior in some context, especially about things he may have been smoking. Objection to that. You have, uh, every complaint that's been filed by Johnny Smith since 2004. Mr. Bass, Mr. Bass, you'll have a chance to. Respond. All right. One of the videos shows something between his fingers, by the way. And uh, the, the, the one involving uh, the, uh, the, the former employee of Sugar Creek who was terminated for um, alcohol abuse, uh, that is the individual, according to these, this sworn testimony, that uh, inappropriately touched one of Mr. Smith's employees. That's what they were trying to do to call the police and they weren't chasing him, they're trying to keep him in sight for the police. Uh, and I think it can't be ignored that these, uh, these supposed egregious charges, none of which can be found in, in any of the regulations, um, were only brought up when his employer had an opportunity to purchase additional equipment and when you have Hat Creek's uh, permits expiring by operation of law because uh, he has gone out of the business. Uh, it's an interesting coincidence that you wait 18 months and then you bring up something that you believe is so terrible. In fact, he even had them on video, so he must have had the video for 18 months. So I would uh, respectfully recommend that uh, these, uh, these charges have just not been founded and should be dismissed. Do so I have a chance to respond to that? Yes. All right. It seems to be a blanket accusation made by Mr. Smith whenever he complains about somebody. It goes back to 2004 where there were, and this is before I lived in Nashville, there were complaints filed by Paul Morrison that Mr. Smith was hollering that his drivers do drugs. Then he had charges against David Biddle and two of the three complaints had P.S. I think he's on drugs at the bottom of the complaints against David Biddle. And then on social media, Fox 17, he stated that, or his wife or one of them, but the proprietors, that a particular girl went to work for Southern Comfort Carriages because they let people smoke pot there. Now, that's a blanket throw. They have something that looks like I'm smoking something? Please show it. You saw in my own videos the cigarette. If you're trying to stretch a cigarette into something else, please show the video. Thank you, Ms. Bassett. Thank you. I appreciate your time. I really do. We have somebody raising their hand. Yes. If you'll introduce yourself, please. My name is Paul Morrison. I'm the owner of Southern Comfort Carriage. Um, sorry for all this y'all have to go through all the time. I just wanted to make one little point and leave it with y'all. And y'all let it do whatever it's going to do. Every, there's been six or seven people that work for Johnny Smith. They now work for me, or they have worked for me. If you will look at all of your complaints, you will find that those are the ones he harassed the most. It starts when he first sees them on the street. He'll scream and cuss and threaten them when he first sees them driving. Then it's followed up by constant harassment. Clint's worked for him, Russell's worked for him. Stacy, the one that was with Hat Creek that they've got uh, complaints again. They just, he will not leave them alone. And I'm just gonna drop that with y'all and I trust y'all can see through some things that are presented here. And as long as he's up, may I ask him a question <laughs> since he's commenting? That's, that's all right, Mr. Bassett. All right. Well, we've taken all these complaints up at once um, for
for consideration. Uh, I know uh, that we as commissioners have reviewed the complaints that were submitted in writing and also um, the declarations that Mr. Blackburn submitted uh, yesterday afternoon to the TLC. Um, and we've heard from Mr. Bassett, um, seen several of his videos and also heard from Mr. Blackburn uh, through his uh, argument and then cross-examination of Mr. Bassett. So I feel like we've heard um, a fair amount of factual statements about what has happened um, for us to consider whether it's been a violation. Not unlike our last scenario, I'd like to ask a question. How many, have any of you been to Charleston and, mm -hmm. and witnessed how they handle their oh, carriages here? Perfect. Yeah. Could we not solve a lot of this if we mandated that nobody gets out of the carriage and just like a taxi stand, somebody says next one up, next one up, next one up, period. End of conversation, nobody's out of the, nobody's out of the carriages, nobody's on the streets creating any problems. There's no other conversation. Yes, my understanding of the way that it works in Charleston is that the companies actually pay fees that would be adequate to either fund it through a metropolitan government function or through a private organization. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding, of, and again, I've not studied it, but I have spoken to folks that have, and that it is they pay fees to the city, then the city actually has employees in the stand that right. are doing two things. One, monitoring the situation, but also monitoring that the city of Charleston receives a fee for each ride, is my understanding. So if you put seven on a carriage or six or three or whatever, a fee is paid back to the city. And then those funds would be made available to uh, operate that. Now it would take, for us to do that, we would have to change the ordinance, add a lot of the ordinance. We'd also have to work with the administration uh, through the and the council through the budget process to actually fund uh, a position. And it'd probably take two positions at least because one person couldn't do the stand seven nights a week. Uh, I, I've, been, seven days a week. I've been on the commission five, six years now, and, and it's, it's always the same issue. He said, she said, they're not being nice to each other. It, it's always, to me, can be solved by not allowing that scenario to even happen. That's, that's where we have the problem. If, if, there, if nobody's allowed to be on the street soliciting business, then it is who's ever up next gets the ride. Mr. Fields is correct, though, that a change of that magnitude would require council It's okay. We, we just need to go to the council to get that done. Can we make a recommendation to the council? Yes, you can. What is you, it, is that the best way to do it, or is there another? You might want to consider putting that on a separate agenda in okay. the future for a specific discussion of sure. that, just so that you know the <coughs> interested parties would have the opportunity to come and comment on that recommendation. Okay. I remember several months ago I had recommended the same thing, that next one up, and what I was told was some of the guests preferred to ride on different carriages, like they have that Cinderella carriage, they have that, that closed one, they have different, and people want those. I don't know how to get around that. I, I, no. I agree with you 100%. You get around it by saying this is the way it's going to be, because okay. there's, there's too many other problems. If the council you either know, passed an ordinance to that some, effect or gave you the authority to pass a rule to that effect, <coughs> clearly it's first in, first out, which we do it the airport for taxi cabs. Right. right. And it works. Typically. It works. And they don't get to choose whether it's a yellow taxi or a Correct. green taxi. Or pink. <laughs> or pink. <laughs> uh, my other question, Mr. Fields, and I hate to put you on the spot for this, but did we actually witness any violations? I was not present, nor were the inspectors. Well, I mean, basically, for what we were anything that was talked about today was it a violation of of any of our rules hmm. the if if i think i'm being told something i don't know if it says changes we think the time is pointing out to me 
correct. There, what I was going to say, and, and that's part of what I would have said. There is a section that requires that the owners not do any, that, that that there not be any action that would be detrimental to public safety. So there, you know, you could argue that there might have been public safety. The, the only the issue would have been blocking traffic more than anything else. But again, you 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 have to get it in perspective of being able to see the entire right. blockage, which means it almost takes an overhead camera to see if they're in the street and that sort of thing so and, and whether it's not nice or otherwise there's no rule that says the <laughs> carriage has carriage to pull up for the other he, he, he well, could have it, literally gone around uh, and I'm, I'm just asking yeah, a question well 12, 1254 200 uh conduct of drivers a says a driver shall at all times act in a reasonable prudent and courteous manner maintain a sanitary and it goes through several things what we do not regulate is the other employees on the sidewalks we, we we do not license any of that uh if an owner were to were to step up i think you probably could go to the owner section and argue that there might be a violation there but we as they're written and as they're presented i suspect it'd be very hard to prove that there was a, a direct violation it in in you know, we all get to say something funny every so often. When I worked in codes, which I did for several years, one of the things we found that a lot of people didn't like some of the things there, but it was ugly, and ugly is not illegal. <laughs> and while it, it may be distasteful, it may be inappropriate, unless there's a specific violation, um, and they're spelled out pretty carefully. Now, again, you can, you can embellish these laws with rules to go with it. But that would be after the fact that wouldn't apply to anything today. Right. That's all I have. First, we need to determine if there's been a violation. Correct. Um, I move that we uh, find Sugar Creek in violation of 1254-200, uh, A1 and A11, which covers the conduct of drivers, disorderly conduct, including obstructing traffic, obstructing the crosswalk, blocking access to carriage stand, endangering pede pedestrians, passengers, and drivers, and acting in a reasonable and prudent manner on the dates of 4 7 16 5 7 16 5 8 16 6 24 16 and 5 29 17. That was a motion? That was. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. I move that a court. Oh. If I may, Mr. Chair, I think I think part of the issue that you've got here, and again, it, it, it certainly I saw conduct on a lot of sides that I would not be happy with had I observed it myself. I, this speaks specifically to a driver and to drivers. And in this case, the only driver present that I'm aware of would have been would have been uh, Mr. Bassett. The I, I, I do not I'm not certain. But I do not believe that the employee that they're discussing would have been a driver. And this doesn't apply to any of the ranch hands, as they call them. Or, or we don't have driver permits for the ranch hands. I think that's correct. We don't, we don't um, specifically regulate any of the employees other than the ranch hands. But we do regulate certificate holders. But that goes to that more generic. That gentleman in the blue shirt did have a driver's permit, the one that was dancing in front of me. I mean, that if, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, maybe that's something we could find out more factual information about. But 200 is a violation on the part of the driver for which there can be discipline of the driver's permit. Um, so we are talking about, I believe, Mr. Bassett lodged the complaint directed at the certificate holder. What about holding the, the company owner liable for the... Just as we did in the previous one with the other vehicles you where... You could do that, but you would have to specify that that's what you're doing. So the disciplinary action one for certificate holders um, says um, lists various violations, making a false statement in the application, failing to comply with provisions of this chapter, perhaps failing to adequately train his drivers not to violate... Adequately train his drivers, like yes. That. Failed to comply with the conditions and limitations of the certificate, 
Um, some of these are about number nine. convictions. Number nine is generally um, uh, engaged in conduct detrimental to the public safety. Um, so that, that, that was the one um, that, that Mr. Fields and Mr. Turner were pointing out, I think, um, uh, that, that may be generic enough to um, encompass this. But is it appropriate to, to amend my motion? Well, let me just ask, would it be cleaner to <laughs> stick to the incident of May 29, 2017 that did involve uh, Tony Smith and that we saw video on here? Yeah, and Mr. Bassett has clearly been watching Metro Nashville Network and um, <laughs> uh, has watched some other commissions um, in which we've talked about um, this, the standard of evidence, and, and he is stating that correctly, that um, and, and the chair stated it earlier correctly, that um, your mission is to not be arbitrary and capricious, to have a factual basis for any determination that you make um, that has to be more than a scintilla of evidence. Um, and, and so um, I think that, that, that the key thing is really just to articulate for the record the factual evidence that you see as supporting your conclusion that there was a violation. Okay. Well, and what will we do if it was a golf cart and mm -hmm. what we've done in the past? Mr. Turner, do you have a suggestion on your, uh, your motion? Well, perhaps that I could uh, amend that um, uh, motion to reference uh, 1254.070. Uh, both uh, sections um, four and nine uh, effectively conduct in a manner uh, detrimental to public safety. There was a motion. I believe a motion or an amendment. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So you're withdrawing your earlier motion? You amended it. Okay. I mean, it was already voted on. Oh. Yeah, let's well, withdraw I'll the uh, previous one in the old. Replace it. You'll replace it. To be clear. I second it. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, then the. Uh, First motion that uh, we passed is being withdrawn. Um, Mr. Turner has uh, made a second motion, uh, which has just been uh, passed. Uh, so we've found a violation by Sugar Creek Carriages, uh, we need to decide uh, what we will do with regard to uh, that violation. Having found a violation of 1254.070, um, I move that we um, suspend the certificate of Sugar Creek for a period of 180 days. <laughs> Utterly reprehensible. Yes. Does that mean that Paul Mills is going to get hacked free? Yeah. The motion hasn't been seconded. I'll second it. Uh, motion's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Chairman, can, may I ask if there's a means to have these videos in the record? Are they are? Do we? Yeah, we'll. We'll, we'll, have, well, well they'll, they'll have to be provided. Um, we'll have to find a medium. Most of the videos that I receive, I'm unable to operate. But it's just that with this is reviewed, <coughs> sure it will be. Sure. Um, we understand, Mr. Blackburn. They will be. We want sure that they are made part of the record. Will it be? Oh, yeah. uh, if I may ask, is it going to be the ones that we observed, <coughs> or all of them? I believe the ones that you observed I would be the true. ones that would be relevant. Thank you. I would like the videos he referenced showing me doing something. Okay. And, and just so uh, we're clear, uh, Mr. Turner, if you'll restate the provisions that uh, um, the commission has found the Sugar Creek to be in violation of. I believe it was uh, 1254070. Uh, A4 and A9. And uh, Ms. Costones, could you verify that that is the correct reference? Yes. 
The, the, so four is failed to comply with the condition conditions and limitations of the certificate. I'm sorry, that may be the incorrect one, and I did point that out to Mr. Turner, so that is my mistake. Um, I just want to make clear, and I, I realize I meant how two. hard it I'm is. afraid I meant to fail to comply with the provision of this chapter, and nine is engaged in conduct detrimental to the public safety. Thank you for asking, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> All right, so I realize there's a very limited record um, that goes before the transfer court. So I do think it's important that we do, as a commission, clarify as explicitly as possible which provisions of our rules we believe are violated. Uh, it sounds like um, we as a commission did um, in error reference the wrong provision when we were, in, were intending to reference 1254-070-82 and referenced A4, uh, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And But the reference to A9 was correct? Yes. Um, Ms. Castano, should we make an, another motion withdrawing the first one and then um, re correcting with a third motion? Ideally, yes, I apologize for the strain. I, I would also appreciate the commission articulating the record um, the, for the record, um, the, um, the length of the suspension, the, the factors that you observe in this case that are different from previous cases that you um, feel merit a suspension of six months. Thank you. Um, Mr. Turner, would you like to make a, withdraw your, your second motion and make a third? I will withdraw the first and the second. Withdrawn. We need a vote? No. All right. Um, having found a violation, um, we've still found a violation, correct? That is up to you all. <laughs> well, I mean, we've already, having okay. found a violation, 1254-070, section A2 and A9. Mr. Turner, I, I think we need to recharacterize that. To, uh, put that in the we have to find a violation yeah. first. Yeah. So yes. your, your new motion needs to specifically move that um, we as a commission find a violation of one of our rules. I believe we've determined that the correct reference is 1254-070-A2 and A9. A move we find a violation of 1254-070-A2 and A9. I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Now. now, having found a violation of 1254-070, Section A2 and A9, <coughs> I move that we uh, suspend the operation of Sugar Creek for 180 days, effective immediately. Second. And um, bef before we take a vote on that, I believe Ms. Costonis recommended that um, as part of your motion, you give some of the factors that went into your consideration for um, making a motion for 180 days. Uh, it, it appears that there's a pattern of behavior that's consisted for uh, a number of years <coughs> and, and on video for a uh, a, a period of approximately 18 months, uh, and the pattern is consistent in a disregard for the safety of pedestrians, passengers, and drivers. Blatant disregard. And Mr. Mr. McNally, you still second? I do. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you for. Uh, letting me clear that up a little bit for uh, for everybody for their appeal. That's why Pat should always do the motion. Yeah. <laughs> um, next, um, we have some more complaints. Uh, before we get into those complaints, Mr. Fields, does it make sense to take some of these other matters up if they're rather short, just so we can get people out of here who are lower in the agenda? Sure, if you just... Um, I'm not sure there any there's anything below that would that's uh, 
that should take a lot of time. Again, most are going to have to do with how many questions that y'all may have. I think most of the applications are going to be in order. Um, all right, well then, we're, let's take um, some of these matters. We've got... Um, Driver application review. We've got other passenger vehicles for hire, review company applications for CLH investments, DBA 615, VIP rides, and Nash 509 limo services. Yes, they're there and they are in order. Move to approve. Second. Second. All, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, we also have a, uh, we've been asked to review a company name change for Music City Limo to Zach Limo? Yes. It's also in order. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We also have under uh, Wrecker and Towing Services um, four driver applications. The first is Matthew Barnes. Okay. Here he comes. One second. Let me catch up. <laughs> and we've got, there are actually four, so. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay, Mr. Barnes made application to be a, a, a record driver. Uh, he failed to disclose possession of a handgun and influence, uh, had a handgun while under the influence of driving on a suspended license. Mr. Barnes, you present. There's Mr. Barnes. I don't mean to ask too many questions, but possession of a handgun while under the influence of driving on a suspended license, what is that? No, it was a, uh, it was a DUI stop, okay. and I told the officer I had it, but the lawyer, they did something to where it, <clears throat> they kind of put the two charges together, and it, I don't... Is it one of these DUIs that you reported, though? Yeah, it was the last one. 2008? what you thought that your all you had was a conviction for a DUI and you didn't know there was another charge. yeah I didn't realize there was another charge on it but I when I got the background check I realized what he had done something where I pled guilty to two charges and I, I'm not sure what he done but I didn't know that it was on my record all right One thing concerns me is it was a DUI second offense. And it's been a while ago, so mm -hmm. I've straightened up a lot since then. Okay. Are you clean and sober? For the most part. I socially For the drink. Most part. I mean, I'm definitely not drinking and driving anymore. And the handgun, do you have a license to carry? I did at the time. I haven't renewed. It's quite a while ago. And you've heard how important it is to us about public safety and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Sir. All right. So be conscious of that while you're working as a wrecker? Oh, yes. I move to approve. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next, we have a driver application from uh, Mr. Kawadi Lamont Huey, Huey Robinson. I just have one question. For, as far as him getting this, do we need to go back up to the license commission? Okay. Mm -hmm. I need to return to the office. Right, thank you. Kawadi Lamont. This was deferred from last month? Right. Kawadi Robinson? Not present. Motion to deny. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next is Jonathan Wiggins. Drop our application for Mr. Wiggins. Mr. Fields. In making, in making his application, Mr. Wiggins uh, had, um, had some charges that I felt like the commission would probably at least want to observe. He appears to be eligible, but again, knowing the commission there had uh, domestic assault in 15, and th there were some, some drug charges earlier. Uh, well, some other charge in 2015. I wanted to make sure the commission saw that. Mm -hmm. 
he did bring in other records from uh, Rutherford County. He, he cooperated with everything to yes, show sir. us what he had. What was the domestic assault about? Uh, w with my child's mother, it was actually uh, she had wrote the DA this past year <clears throat> and admitted to lying about it, but since I already pled out and it was already took the domestic assault, there was nothing they could do unless I took her back to court for perjury, which <coughs> she's incarcerated now, so I just left that matter as is. What about the theft misdemeanor? That was again with my child's mother. She had stolen something from Walmart and since I was with her, they had charged me as a lookout. I actually never took nothing and the report should state that. Because I was with her though, they also charged me. Criminal contempt in June? I'm, I'm not sure how I got that or what. I, I'll try to pull that up and talk to the lady. I have all my records here, but I don't understand how I even have that charge because I, I guess that happens when you're in court and you say something, but I've never disrespected or spoke out a you know, term going to court for, you know, in front of the judge or anything, so I don't know how I have that charge. What about the drug paraphernalia? These are all 2015. Yeah, the drug paraphernalia, that was when I, uh, I got my friend I was with had a warrant and that's that when I had the domestic, I also had a right, one for, my, for, for myself, and he had drug paraphernalia on him, and since he did not admit to it, we both had ha had to take the charge. His name was Christopher Knowles. Are you on probation? Yes, sir. And March, uh, March 22nd, 2017, you were arrested on a probation violation? Uh, that was for state probation, Officer Holt. I had moved into a halfway house. Uh, I'd been so I'm sober for eight months now, and mm -hmm. uh, I had told them that my new address. He had retired. I got a new officer. Yeah, I guess my question is, you got arrested in March of this year. For yes, sir. Probation violation. What yes. was the violation for? The, it was one technical for not changing my address, which I was getting mm -hmm. to, and the halfway house uh, friend of Bill's actually had faxed it to him. He lost it, retired. The new probation officer didn't have it, so they had violated me because they lost that paperwork. The halfway have, house you're in, is that a rehab? No, I'm, I'm not there anymore. No, sir. I, 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 live, I live in a house with my sister. Okay. Why were you in a halfway house? I was just getting sober again, cleaning up my act and okay. getting everything under control. So it was a step down from a program of some kind? I, I, I don't know what you mean, a step down. Well, like a... We say halfway house, you're getting like clean friend of bills, yeah, just getting sober, you know, cleaning up my act and everything. All right, so yes, it was sir. a recovery halfway house, yeah, yes, sir, yes, All sir. Right, that's all. Now, what are you on probation for? Uh, for the original 2012 uh, charge, you see on there for the possession, the possession and manufacturing schedule, yes, sir. Two. What was the drug? Cocaine. Which uh, I report weekly. Uh, I'm happy to give you my probation officer's information, drug test weekly. N no issues there whatsoever. Already completed my community service. Do you drug test weekly? Uh, well, it's random, but usually about every other week I'll get one. That's just the nature of the probation. When do you get off probation? <sighs> an exact date. I think it's uh, 2019. I can't give you an exact date. Would you get a seven or eight year sentence? No, it was it was three, but because I violated, they reinstated it, and I had to start it over. So it was three years probation that you should have come off in 2015. That was with those other charges. I got so you must have violated again. Yeah, it was and two violations total: the 2015 and this previous one, just for the change of address. Yes, sir. been clean and sober for nine months? Yes, ma'am. I'm happy to take a drug test as we speak. Is he a eligible candidate for... I'm record? sorry, can you just clarify which violation that he's on probation for? It's not the drug par paraphernalia oh, yeah. charge, correct? No, he's on for the possession and sale of manufacturing of cocaine. Schedule 2. And that's a felony charge. That is a felony. On the first page of his uh, TBI report shows the probation violation felony March 27, 2017. Which judge you in front of down there in Rutherford County? Sir? Which judge you in front of in Rutherford County? Uh, Bragg? Uh, I believe it's Bragg. I have some of my paperwork here. I'm trying to find the exact judge. 
I, I believe so. I have copies of all my court stuff here. Then I may have missed it. Are you allowed to? Yeah. I think you're allowed to. Yeah, I thought so. Too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Wait, we weren't clear if, that if he was off or if he's placed on. Placed on probation or so released from incarceration within a period of five years prior to the day. All right, your conviction was 2012, right? Yes, sir. I was I was looking at when I filled it out. It had to be five years old, and actually, when I turned it in, it was five now, years and one hold, month. Hold on. Okay. When you were placed, when you entered your guilty plea, were you immediately placed on probation, or were you, did you have to serve a sentence and then you were placed on probation? I was immediately placed on 2012. I never for did any time. So, what date in 2012? Uh, give me just a second. Oh, you got the paper? Good, good. Five years yeah, I have all my court documents here. Would it have been August 25th, 2012? Uh, <clears throat> give me one second. I, I don't want to tell no, you. That's the arrest date. I'm, I'm sorry. Right. This comes out. It's the arrest date. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm. August 25th, 2012 is his arrest date. It would have probably have been several months later. Sorry, I'm confused. I can't find it on the... Okay, right here. It's fresh. Uh, here's the probation violation I call. I, I have to look. I, I don't I don't want to give you all the wrong date. I'm, I'm not exactly sure the exact date. But I appreciate that. Um, I would recommend we defer this for him to bring to you the paperwork of when he was placed on probation from Rutherford County Circuit Court. And then they can look at it. And the reason we're deferring you today, or I would ask to defer you, is because there's an eligibility requirement that you have, you would have had to been at least five years earlier to still be eligible. I'm not saying that very well. If you were placed on probation within the last five years, you're not eligible for this position or for, for a permit. Okay, I thought it was when you got like convicted of the charge or. Correct. That's why I need to know what date in 2012 you were actually placed on probation. Because if it was August, August, August then okay. it should be okay. Yeah, but it says here on your TBI report, it says your arrest date was August 25th, 2012. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure you did not plead out on the day you were arrested. Yeah, I think I have it right here if you want to see. Yeah. But I mean, you got the yeah, judgment? I'm, I'm, I think I am incorrect. This was the arrest date. Ah, that's good. Right here. I don't think that's Beginning March 8, 2013. Hmm. And no. Judge Bragg signed this March 8, 2013. I don't have that record in my file. I know. Uh, and so Mr. Mr. Wiggins. Ah, uh, boy, that's. Mr. 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 Wiggins, March, you need to have this. The rule would require him to wait five years from the point. Uh, again, we didn't have that particular record. I apologize to the commission. Mr. Wiggins, I'm afraid you're going to have to wait till March 8th of 2018 18. to apply. I'm uh, really sorry. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, and good luck on the continuing with all your sobriety. Appreciate it. We need to make a motion denying his application. The, the rule would, you would not require action because the rule already states that. Um, uh, next is uh, Jesse Pecora. Mr. Pecora is already a uh, record driver. When he was, uh, when you approved his permit, uh, when you approved his permit at uh, the August 24th meeting, you restricted him to JD's towing. He would like to have that restriction changed, I believe, to a different company well, or I'd, lifted. I'd really like to have it lifted because it's really limited me on <clears throat> seeking employment. Um, but I have secured a job with Southside. Um, it, it's been a long time since so I've been in any trouble. I mean, for me to have a restriction on there is just hindering me as far as 
you know, a better opportunity or or any of that as far as working for a company. What happened to your job with JD? Um, well, we had some personal issues between me and the owner and it just was a better idea to leave the company just because of the way he was running things and it just it didn't make a lot of sense some of the things he was doing and I said something to him about it and he didn't really like that. Looks like you were uh, granted your permit back in uh, August. August, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you, at that time you were restricted. Um, and so you want to, at, at a minimum, transfer it to which company now? Southside. Southside. This is Danny with Southside Tony. He's the GM for uh, Southside. Does Southside uh, do non-consent towing? Southside does do non-consent. Yes, sir. Did JDs do non-consent? They did not. And we had we had no information provided to the comp to us for any issues with the driver at the present time. Well, Mr. Procor, I would say that um, you know we as a commission put you on restrictions um, in August um, and typically those restrictions wouldn't be lifted just a couple of months later. Um, I don't see an issue necessarily with you having those restrictions moved to a different company, although it, it would be unusual um, to have you uh, doing non-consent towing. Would the job still be open to him if he was restricted? Yes, yeah, we can limit who we have to do the non consent, so that wouldn't be an issue at all. We've done that before. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we amend the restriction to allow Mr. Priora to work for Southside with the condition that it be restricted from non consent towing. Say. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Good luck. So do I need to pick it up at the come back transportation board? Uh, next, we've got some driver applications uh, under taxi cabs uh, for uh, Mr. Uh, Techly Lachu Bor, Juma Shabu, and Gabriel J Jamson. <coughs> Could you introduce yourself? Yes, sir. Uh, Jonathan Brooks on behalf of Nash Vegas Cab Corporation. Good afternoon, commissioners. Okay. Good afternoon. Did you guys have any questions for me or anything I can answer for you guys? If not, I'll mm -hmm. let my driver answer your questions. All right. Okay, Mr. Boro. Yeah. Uh, my name is Taklila Choboro. I've been a, a cab driver in Nashville uh, for more than five years. and. Uh, Mr. Fields, uh, could you give in, us a, a preamble of what the issue is here? In, in making his new application for um, <coughs> for this year, Mr. Buru failed to disclose a 2017 assault charge. Hmm. <coughs> can, can, can I answer? Yes, what was the yeah. assault charge for? Uh, uh, the charge was I had some kind of dispute with my wife. It was on January 19, 2017. So uh, finally, you know, as, as we, we got three kids. So one of our kids, is, she's diabetic. So uh, I told her to, to follow rules because she was almost high. So the doctor normally calls me, gives me a call, you know. So a little bit stressed and uh, I told the police, if you are not following the rules, my kids, our kids are going to be in danger. So finally, I was kind of frustrated. I said, I'm going to file divorce. So when I, when I told her this, she, I told her that, she just walked out. So uh, after some time, cops just show, showed up. So uh, 
she said just knock and they said she called 911 and uh, uh, she 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 is claiming a lot of stuff physical abuse verbal abuse those kind of thing uh, Mr. Boer, why, why didn't you list that on your application? The uh, to be honest, the, it, the case was dismissed. Uh, and uh, the expunge order was on March 2017. So in my mind, I never thought, you know, it was still on my record. Mm. Uh, so when I filled out that application, I didn't pay attention. I mean, normally I've been doing this application for more than five years. So I said yes, no, yes, no, and uh, walked out. But later on, I received a call uh, from the TLC office. They said, still, uh, I, I put some misleading information. I told them, no, it was not inten any misleading information. In my mind, it was already expunged. So uh, I submitted a copy of uh, the, expunge the expungement to the commission, too, in fact. Mm -hmm. We do have the order. Yeah. I make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Motion passes. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Next is Mr. Shabu, Mr. Fields. Mr. Shabu, I made an application to be a, a taxi cab driver. Um, he has had a permit before. He failed to, uh, well, Here's what happened. As you recall, at the August or at the September meeting, we announced that United Cab had gone, had uh, failed to renew, which meant their permit, was, their certificate was voided. Um, rather than stop operating as a United driver, he continued to operate. We were able to, uh, we actually uh, uh, observed him. We. When he came in, we denied renewal until it um, <clears throat> until it comes in front of the commission. So he actually operated a tax cab while the company was out of business. So we had a wildcat driver. We did. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> my name is Juma Shaivo. I'm new, first of all, to this country first second I'm new driver to United this is my second year and then I was in Nebraska for three weeks and then when I came back I paid all my lease I paid all my uh, my uh, insurance because all the insurance has to be paid to the to the United according to the new system and then I left and that was a uh, on 5th of, of September. And when I came back um, from Nebraska, I didn't know that the company shut down. This is one thing I need to be sincere to you because the owners of United, they didn't tell us. This is one thing that I want to be clear with you. Up to now, they are United cops drive, uh, driving around my house. So, so lucky and unlucky at the same time, I was good, and then they told me to go to commission. And then when I went to commission, I say, hey, my license is taken. They told me, you need to go to commission. I need to reapply, and it's okay. You can reapply, but still you need to go to, to commission. This is how I, I came here today. But I never, ever did something wrong because I have a family and I'm trying, but I was not notified. Otherwise, I would have not even do that. And I do not believe we have a history of uh, continual violations from uh, this person. I make a motion to approve. Second. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Lastly, we have a um, driver minute. application for uh, Gabriel Jamson. In making his application, yeah, I know. I said the same thing. In making his application, he failed to disclose a 2016 DUI charge. Look, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Gabriel Champson, and I drive for Allied since '03. Um, it looks like you're uh, you're before us because you did not disclose a 2016 
uh, DUI, is that correct? It wasn't, that, that was, a, uh, I think, uh, it was not the charge. Um, it was careless driving. So when I was filling the form and I reached a place, they said, did you, did, did you get accident and kill somebody before? Or you have a reckless driving? So uh, since it was careless driving, I mark it no. Actually, I don't know. So um, after finishing everything, they call me back again that on my background, they have seen um, DUI. But the uh, court hearing, it was uh, during the arrest, the police gave me a charge of DUI and um, took me there. They texted me, and it wasn't. Okay, so they, they said, okay, I have to go to court. So when I went to the court, the lady said, okay, the church said, okay, um, we found you in the, in the car. You were sitting down behind the steering, but you were not moving. And also, we went there, we did not get a picture, uh, photograph. So now, um, I'm going to give you a charge of careless driving. So I have a lawyer from a uh, public defender called uh, Ember. She can test, uh, testify for me. So my judgment was careless driving, not DUI. Well, you didn't put careless driving on your application either. No, and there was no, it, it did not say so. It was, did you kill somebody or did you have a reckless driving of, uh, offense? Then I actually, I did not mark it. Well, the application asks you to list each violation of a federal, state, or local law with which you have been ever charged or arrested, whether convicted or not, and all expunges must be listed. So that was a mistake uh, or over, or oversight. Excuse me. Well, someone provided uh, the criminal court record here for us, and it shows that he, he was arrested for driving under the influence. It was amended to reckless driving, not careless driving, but reckless driving, which is a class A misdemeanor. But he got quite a, quite a uh, disposition because it was under judicial diversion, which means uh, on March 7, 2017, he could have gone back to court and had it expunged. You were still required to report it, but that just states what you were convicted of and what your disposition was. You may, I still uh, required to report? When you made your application here, you were still required to list your reckless driving conviction on your application. Mm, well, and interesting, that seems to be the only thing on your criminal record, so it would it behoove you to have gone ahead and listed it? Um, I can say it was uh, misstated because this uh, lawyer can testify for me. By the time I was given a charge that day, she said, okay, you are good. The judge gave you uh, careless driving. Okay, so she sent me to the probation office, office and said, okay, if you have everything finished, if you let me know, then we, I will clear everything for you. That was what she told me. So she misled me as a matter of You just still needed to report it. You yeah. needed to, to let us know that it happened and that it was expunged. But you it, needed to let us know that it happened. It is true. Right. But you see, sometimes <laughs> as an African, uh, in the American language eludes us a little. So when I read that statement, I was confused. That was what happened, but not that I'm, I was hiding or I'm hiding. Right. I assume reckless driving does not make him ineligible. Well, if he were convicted of reckless driving, it would make him ineligible. It's my understanding. And I, <laughs> it, but it was my understanding there is not a disposition because of the because of uh, the TCA 40. 
35-313, which says the judgment is deferred and there's no conviction. So as long as there's not a conviction, he's technically eligible to be a driver. The violation, that the, what got him here was exactly what you said, you failed to fully disclose. Had you fully disclosed, I would have read that and said there is not a conviction and, and because the judgment's deferred. So what the commission is considering is, do they believe you were being deceptive in completing your application? And that's, that's the reason anytime anybody leaves something off, we come to the commission and you have to tell them why you would have left it off. What you've said was you misunderstood, you thought you, you didn't realize that yeah. you should have put that down. Yeah, that's, that, that's what I said. Okay. I make a motion that we approve. Second. Second. There you go. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> motion passes. Aye. Who did this? Okay. We also have... Uh, <laughs> first. Well, under other business or just announcements that you're making, right? Correct, Mr. Fields. If I can let me catch up. We're going to... Oh, before we do that, if we may, Mr. Blackburn would like to make it, it I think it's appropriate, would like to make a request of the commission. There was two charges, uh, the other two, with Stacy Romines and Clint Des Moines, and we would just like to ask that that be deferred. To November, December, January? They can be filed, you can basically non-suit them, can't you? And we can refile it, not, not worry the commission with putting it on the... Well, probably not done Does that. Does it make but any difference which way you do it? There's not a prohibition in the rules. You could way. you could withdraw them and then re you know withdraw them without prejudice. <laughs> and that's okay. what I request. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Blackburn. Thank you. Does the commission need to accept or not? Because it's withdrawn, we don't need to take action, correct? Mm -hmm. that's it. Wow. Okay. Um, that leaves us with a complaint against Joyride. Well, what about yeah. that if other business? If we're back to that, or if you want to, you want to do those, the, the other business? Yes, yeah. Okay. The, if the there there will be two other three other items under the other business. The first item is checker cab ownership change announcement. We have to actually make the we have to make the announcement that checker the owner of checker would like to transfer ownership to his son. It has to be announced in a public meeting. We've done that. We would come back to the commission in, in uh, November to ask you to uh, consider it. So it just has to be announced is my understanding. Uh, secondly, you will have somewhere in this paper that's spread out, you will see a, there is a the 2018 schedule of meetings. We normally would approve it in October. Um, the meeting schedule is very similar to what you would have had this year. They're typically the fourth Thursday other than November, when it will be the third Thursday in December, which will be the second Thursday. Uh, the filing deadlines for each of the public hearings are also listed, so by accepting this calendar, you would also accept all the filing deadlines. Any motion? I think so. Move accepted. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, then one last thing that I apologize is it, it should have been listed and I did not do that. Uh, there is a name change for Quick Cab somewhere on this desk. The name change is involving, the name change is in, They'd already, they'd already done that. The name change is basically involving uh, when uh, Mr. Singh purchased that particular company, he continued with the corporate name of uh, the corporate name as Quick Cab uh, LLC. What he would like to do is have that list as Quick Cab Red LLC to differentiate himself from the previous company. I think it's more of a legal issue with, with various state and federal tax issues and things like that, but there's no there's no ownership change. It's just a name change to adopt a new corporate name. And it won't change the color scheme or the no. name of the cans? No. All it would do, all it does is just basically, uh, it changes the face of the application, which requires the commission to approve it. Move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Fields. Okay. Okay. Um, so that leaves us with a couple of more items. Um, we've got a complaint against Joyride as, and also a request by American Melody Carriages to remove operational restrictions. Uh, Mr. Fields, do you have a recommendation which one would be shorter to deal with first? Well, I, 
what you've got is you've got one additional for sprocket rocket. There were actually two that were filed. Oh, I'm, I, I thought we had uh, already dealt with sprocket rockets. You, you did with, with one of them, but there's still a second one. Uh, then you've got the the joy ride. Uh, you got the joy ride issue, and then you have American Melody. I think those are the last three things. We'll double check everything. Well, there she is. Would go with Melody. That's all I see. Do, do you have a recommendation, Ms. Fields, uh, if, if um, we took American Melody carriages? I, I, would that I think be a short fine. matter? It, it, it would be something for you to consider relatively quick. Uh, is Melody here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she case, but when uh, when Miss Robinson was and American Melody was given a certificate to operate as a carriage company, there were restrictions placed on her carriage. Uh, you'll remember that she had operated in, uh, in in Centennial Park and other places in downtown. You agreed to let her come to the downtown area a couple days a week and several holidays. She's asking that all of her restrictions be lifted. Go ahead, please. If you'll state your full name for everybody on here. My name is Melody here. Robinson. Um, I'm owner-operator of American Melody Carriages, and I'm requesting for the restrictions to be lifted from my permits in light of the fact that uh, Hat Creek is no longer in existence. And I also would like you to consider um, that if Southern Comfort is requesting those permits, I would also like to be considered in all fairness for those permits because I have operated as manager of Hat Creek for the last four months. And I have the least amount of permits of anyone downtown. Mr. Fields, when when do we as a commission consider uh, the reissuing of the permits that Hat Creek had? The, Would that be at the, the next annual meeting? Actually, yeah, what it amounts to, when the permits, just like United, when the certificate was forfeited, it was forfeited by purchase, they no longer existed. So while there are places that that carriage company operated, the permits themselves no longer exist. The commission would have to make a determination that it did, that have to you'd have to have a hearing, you'd have to take applications. That meeting will be is normally in November. There were no applications made. The next one you just approved will be November the twenty uh, November fifteenth next year. So in order to consider, you either on your own would have to make a recommendation to place on the public hearing considerations or they would basically stay silent until next November, well, until next September 28th, when deadline, which is the deadline for filing for the November meeting for additional companies. And at that meeting, we'd find, we'd, we'd have to answer the first question of, is there a need? Correct. Correct. Okay. And then you would, if there's a need, you determine how many and then who should get them. And so the Hat Creek carriages will not be operating until November of... They won't. They will not Where operate until this commission re. Right, Hat Creek I mean. no longer exists. How, how many permits Southern are we Comfort. talking about? Yeah. Uh, Hat Creek. He had could, four. I was going to say he could, he could operate four. So those four are off the street. We're down now down to thirteen. Well, it certainly makes sense to uh, consider lifting uh, the restrictions for your company, given that the whole reasoning why they were in place in the first place is because we felt like there was too much congestion. Yeah. That doesn't require, that would not require a public hearing, right. but that would basically require is action of the commission. Uh, how many do you have, how many permits? I have two that are restricted to Monday through Thursday only. And Head Creek had four. Well, in light of those mathematics, right. I'll make yeah. a motion to lift the restrictions for American, American Melody carriages. Yeah, I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Good passes. Thank Congratulations, you, you did Thank it. You. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, taken a little while. I know you're while. tired of seeing me, but I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. This gentleman. That's diligence Southern right there. <laughs> yeah. He's his hand. I hope he understands yeah, that he didn't buy those okay. permits. While I canceled the meeting, I was going to try to get the four permits. If I can't get them all, can I get some of them continue working the people? You'll have to, we'll address that at the next annual meeting, which, as Mr. Fields has just explained, it will be in November. 
Okay, yeah, because he didn't decide to sell until a couple of weeks ago and it was past the time to get the deadline in. So next meeting, you'll decide that. Ne well, in November. Then next November, year. I'm sorry. Of 18, not this year. Nothing to be considered. Nobody applied oh this year. Oh my gosh. Oh, no. Now, again, the commission has the authority to establish a hearing <coughs> and choose to do that. You would have to open it up to anybody who wanted to apply. They would have to prove there's a need. Now, bear in mind, as I told you before, you know, I'm already concerned about congestion downtown for a lot of reasons, but I'm not the one that makes these decisions. This wouldn't be adding any more carriages and what's already permitted downtown. Well, we we'll just absolutely added two, add no more. We, we just added two full time downtown, so. Okay. But it's not on the agenda today. Okay. So. All we did was lift the restriction. All righty. All right, thank you. Uh, we now, oh, wait, I just want, I want to ask a question. I need some clarity here. If Melody Carriages, if we lifted the restriction, we didn't take any of the four of Hat Creeks Correct. and turn them over. So there were still four available. Well, no, no they're, they're gone. Oh, they're, they're gone. They, they don't yeah, exist. So you'd they have to make use. a new finding okay. with the public necessity and convenience okay. merits another four carriages in addition to <coughs> those currently left that are operating. Okay, got it. So I can still try to get them you may. for the company, the new company. November 2018 hearing. Oh gosh. You missed the you missed the deadline. Yeah, well he didn't sell it till after that had passed. He just sold it about a week and a half ago. <clears throat> Next we have a complaint. Um, we have another complaint against Sprocket Rocket. Mr. Fields. Okay, a complaint was filed against Sprocket Rocket for um, being on a restricted street. It was filed on September the 8th by Chris Sizemore. Chris here to, to speak to it. This is not a, this is no staff involvement in this either. Yeah, and things like this, I, I believe we can work out between the two companies. I, this is where I don't want to be. I don't want our, any of our companies to be going back and forth without communication. So I'm willing to withdraw it if we, our companies can work together to resolve these issues. And if, if there's an issue that's brought up, and if we discuss it and there's not a resolution, then we bring it to the meeting. And, you know, the only reason this was brought up is because they brought up one with us when all they needed to do was tell us what the driver done. The driver was terminated instantly after our investigation that day. Um, I'm, I'm trying to work together with everybody here. I'm trying to keep LSVs out just of the- So I'm under, just following, I, I thought we were bringing up the complaint against Rocket Rocket. It is, I'm trying to work out a resolution okay. with, yeah. it was my complaint, but I'm trying to work out a resolution with, with all of the other companies so we can work together because I don't want to argue with like the, the horse and carriages. It's horses without I know, animals. that's exactly what I don't want. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll, I'll give the biggest olive, olive branch that I can. All the other companies, we've been communicating back and forth, working together and, and regulating like this. I'll, I've, been, I've been trying to communicate with them just to see if they resolve the issue from this complaint, and then I, I no longer want it in front of the commission because I'd rather I'd rather them handle it in house than, than us. The, the companies, just like any other complaint, if someone chooses not to prosecute the case, for lack of a better way to describe it, if the two companies decided that they wanted to meet with each other and talk about the issues, again, my issue is always about compliance and public safety. Yeah. I'm not about you know, punishments and discipline, and which is part of the world, and I get that. But my bigger concern is make sure that everybody stays in compliance. And again, Correct. come to the, because again, we've got the other complaint right behind it. If they would like to basically do as Mr. Blackburn has just suggested and go and work on what they want to work on, they certainly have the right to do that if, and they have the right to do that. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to work with them as much as humanly possible. So, I mean, if, if they want to discuss it and we can work together on a resolution, I'm fine, totally fine with that. Uh, I agree with not shutting them down. I believe what y'all what y'all said earlier was was correct with with because I don't want to see them. We need them too because we don't have enough permits as it is. So we need them. And as, as I read it, you've got a complaint against them for going on the wrong street, and they've got a complaint against you for going on Charlotte. No. 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 
No, it's um, okay. they have a complaint against us about an overloaded car. There was extra people on the on the vehicle. The one that's on Charlotte, we we found out that we're allowed to be on that street. We weren't on Charlotte. We were on 17th and Pearl. 17th, yeah. Okay. 17th and Pearl, and that's the street we're allowed to be on. We actually pick up on Pearl. We have two passenger or two residents there that we take to their doctor's appointment weekly. So we make that route a lot. And, and that's inside of our zone, and that's not a street that we're two complaints against uh, Joy right here. I brought it to his attention that yeah, the, that complaint is well, valid. The complaint is not here. So yeah, no, but there were two complaints there would have been, against correct, Joy Wright. And we were, okay. uh, there's a discrepancy about where, I can't tell you where, I can tell you where she says they were, mm -hmm. but she's not here to say where they were. Okay. Well, she had the, she had photos, and they showed the photo of us turning left. It, we were turning left on the 17th. That's All a street right, that we crossed. They're not here. Go. Let's not even go there. So okay. The other one fine. against you is just the overloaded car. Correct. And that's brought by your company? Mm -hmm. And you're bringing one against their company for driving up Broadway. Do you have any videos? <laughs> we, have, we have videos. No, no. <laughs> but we don't want to. But we don't want to. <laughs> I want to work with them. If I can have any olive branch, anything they want to, I'd love to take them out to dinner. Our, dri our drivers work right, together. Right, we, I'm trying to do as much as we can. We would like to voice what our complaint is first and bring it to your attention before we wanted to talk to him because his violation happened the day after our last meeting. So literally, not even 24 hours later, he had seven people on his cart. So we're not wanting to work something out with him at this time because it was not even 12 hours after our last meeting where he claims he has <coughs> seatbelt things in place and geo mapping in place. And then we also have another picture of him, which we didn't file um, a complaint against, of him being out of the bound switch. He's been saying since. Just like Mr. Uh, Bassett, I also went back and watched videos, and so back in 2016, Grant, I'm not sure what his last name, Grant's last name is, claimed that they all had geo mapping in, in place back in 2016, and he's also claimed the same thing, and then we also have them out of bounds again. So we would, we just don't want to kind of, it's just too soon. It's immediately the day after the last meeting. It, it was it, He promised you guys that he already had those things in place. The geofencing, we the the probation didn't go to effect till a month later. Um, they still needed to be voted upon. We did have the meeting, and we had we have GPSs in the vehicles for the long, for almost two years now. The GPS mapping was something that we put in place right before, whenever the boundaries came into effect, which took a little while. Um, and then the video, we don't have the seatbelt things yet. The videos are coming in February, where we're actually adding video monitors to it. The company's just not there yet, and we're planning on it in February. Um, Right. But I don't want this to be a... Well, hang on. Oh, sorry. Well, I'm not sorry. I'm not the chairman. Ms. <laughs> Gastonis, we're, we're, is, we're is there, the um, you know, what, what bothers me about the complaints that are being brought, not just by Joybride, but also by Sprocket Rocket here, is they seem to be, there seems to be some motives besides just, you know, making a complaint about public safety uh, that concern me. And... Um, I want to make sure before I admonish the parties here about their ways and, and methods for uh, going after one another that I'm correct. So when a consumer files a complaint, because that's what's being done here, uh, they're they're claiming that they are the the company that they're making a complaint against is violating a rule of the Transportation License Commission. Um, if the cons the consumer may, if he or she chooses to do so, abandon that complaint, but it's been filed. And if we as a commission want to take it up, can we still take it up? Because isn't it out of the consumer's hands at that point, much like you would report a crime, if just because you decide, oh, well, I, I, I don't want to prosecute, do we as a commission, so can we, do we have the discretion to continue on with the complaint? The complaint process is not, um, the way we do it is not necessarily um, uh, in, uh, adopted in written form um, in terms of, I, I believe the rules do, as Mr. Henry pointed out at the beginning of the meeting, actually give the director the authority um, to take disciplinary action and then they give the um, uh, party the authority to um, appeal that to the commission um, but in I believe in some of these cases the point that you made about the 
motivations, I guess, of some of the complainants um, that um, that may go to kind of the weight of their testimony, perhaps. Um, uh, that because when it is a situation where you have two companies that are rivals cross complaining against each other like this, I believe um, the director feels uncomfortable kind of being that decider of discipline. Um, and that's why we've been bringing them directly to the commission um, for your review. Um, so, I mean, I think that you would have discretion to accept his withdrawal of his complaint, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't necessarily be required to do that if you believe there is already evidence before you of a violation. I do believe that you would, if, if you as guardians of the public safety, as it will, have evidence before you of a violation which you feel it is necessary to take disciplinary action in response to, um, I believe you could do that even if the witness sort of, I wouldn't say he's recanting, I think he's just kind of voluntarily offering a resolution to and try so to. Me and, me and Billy had met at a prior meeting um, with the city and, and what he had discussed is the one thing he wanted to see was us not to fight back and forth. And that's all I'm trying to do here. One of, one of the, the biggest issues that, that I'm always uncomfortable bringing a complaint to the commission without someone who's willing to say this is what happened, even with pictures and everything else. With the pictures. I, I think, I think, the, I think that uh, our legal advisor is correct. You have the authority to take any, if it's in front of you, you can take action with it. I mean, this is not a court of law in the formal sense, but you kind of act as a, in a quasi-judicial capacity. So, I mean, if there is evidence before you, I think there might be a little bit of a question of whether the evidence, the written evidence, the picture evidence or whatever, of, of whether it's authenticated. Right, um, so in the, pros in the prosecuting witness sort of example that you gave, if you could go forward with that case without the prosecuting witness, you would do that. But if the prosecuting witness testimony was necessary to make the case, then the case would fail. So I would look at it from that perspective. I think that's good. Well, I, I asked the question because in the paper submitted, not, n not against uh, Joyride, but the one against Sprocket Rockets that Joyride um, submitted, there was a text message uh, that concerned me um, about I'll read it. It says, if you would withdraw your complaint, we will not file any complaint against you and try to report uh, and try and report any of these complaints to each other so we can deal with it in-house. Correct. And um, that, that statement concerned me just because um, it was suggestive that, you know, I won't, uh, I won't bring a complaint for violation of the TLC rules uh, against you if you withdraw your complaint against me. I mean, that, 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 um, well, it, it um, said that we, that, that clearly is, I to believe me, that you have the ability, if you wish to exercise it, to ask witnesses to testify and ask them questions. Right. You, in this context today, <clears throat> you don't have the ability to compel witnesses. Um, and we'd probably have to talk, if, if, if the witness was <clears throat> reluctant, and you wish to compel their testimony, then um, I might have to run back to my office and research that because we haven't actually, I don't believe we've actually had that happen in TLC history. Um, we've had the issue come up, but I'm not sure that we actually went through with a subpoena. Um, I'd have to I'd have to look back at old records to verify that. I don't know if any of the commission members remember <coughs> that ever happening. Um, and some of y'all have long memories as well. Um, well, and that, that's why I'm asking you, and I'm, obviously we're having this open discussion so Joyride and Sprocket Rockets can hear this, but I'm, I am concerned that if um, filing a complaint for violation of the TLC rules is akin to bringing a, you know, going to the police and reporting a crime, then that's problematic for them. For, I mean, for it's, it's not criminal in nature. It is civil, so it is different in that sense, but it is... Um, your function, and then presumably the motivation of the person's bringing complaints before you, is the preservation of public safety. Am I hearing from you, can you actually take disciplinary action for the ability to thwart the commission? Is that the question, specifically? Um, well, uh, 
my question is, um, I, I, what I see here and I'm concerned about is there, is there an abuse um, of the entire process here? And I... You think the collusion itself is problematic? Or the yeah, and threatening um, yeah. In, in some ways, it appears uh, from this back and forth that they're going to bring a charge against another company, uh, but then not if they do something for them. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. Implicit, it's explicit. Yeah. I was trying. I was trying to go. I thought the. I thought y'all had discussed this every meeting. We say what we don't want is y'all to be bickering and fighting back and forth. I'm trying to find a resolution. Is and I would rather not. And I I'm, would still would withdraw mine if we could come to a resolution and, and just discuss this between our two companies. I mean, I'm not holding it over their head because they still can. I'm. I'm not understanding what a resolution would look like if, if she is saying <coughs> that you you took too many passengers on your cart, and that's what she's saying. Yeah. You took too, what? What kind of a resolution? Well, would the you? employee was let go in immediately. If that if that is okay with them, and and they said okay, that that solves the issue, uh, and then I don't think that needs to be brought in front of the commission. I thought that's how we work together. It's the only the only way we can work together is that when there is an issue, and that issue has to be discussed back and forth for a resolution. If we're not supposed to work together, then I, I was taking the word from everybody else that we're not I supposed understand. to argue together. Because I mean. <clears throat> I don't, but I don't. You filed a formal complaint, correct? You filed a formal complaint, correct? Certainly, you I think you could have had that conversation before you filed a formal complaint. I did. He did. Okay. I did. All right. Yeah. I. All right. He just did, he didn't he didn't believe the uh, validity of the video and said, "Go ahead and file it then." And I said, "Well, I'd just like to discuss it with you. Can you come by?" And there's more text. Was, "Can you come by and look at the message, or can you come by and check out the video?" And he said he didn't believe it. And I mean, we tried to resolve it as much as humanly possible. I can. I still have the entire text. If you want it from the same time, um, what's the date taken? The 19th. Give me a call because I asked him to give me a call just to discuss it. On, and he said of August. I said yes. I said hey, I'm out of town. I'm heading to Knoxville. He said what proof do you have the date was taken? I said uh, the cell phone has a timestamp, um, but that's not the issue. Um, I said these things need to be handled in house and without in front of the TLC. Yes, I'm fully aware of phone timestamps. Take a screenshot with a timestamp. I'll send it to you when I get back Monday, um, and then we go on until you send me a screenshot with the timestamp. This means nothing. Uh, I'll get back to you by m m Monday. Um, well, you stated this today. Um, I'm re responding. There's no way you took that on the 19th. And then I sent him the screenshot. The driver sent me the screenshot of that, and he says that does not connect it to the pic. You guys are full of shit. Um, I said, okay. I said, we have other complaints. We would just like to handle this in house. That's why I was going to tell And that's it's exactly what he had told me that he wanted from us. And that's what I'm trying to do. I hate wasting y'all's time. Well, you were going to say something, and that may. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still pondering the chair's point. I, I, I think that there is um, not an affirmative obligation for any member of the public to bring a complaint of a violation. Um, I, <clears throat> and then he told me to turn the evidence into the TLC, and then I did. And I, when I speak of people cooperating, I think we've just been through about an hour and a half, maybe two, of showing failure to cooperate on things that may or may not be a violation. Is the collusion is One of the problems that we have with any company, and this is any driver that we license, is we have a challenge to be able to monitor those drivers every moment. So we do accept complaints from the public, from the companies. Uh, could the companies, you know, they are, you know, I think these both could be legitimate complaints. There's no question about it. What I'd like to see them do is work to make sure this doesn't happen. If it does happen, they call and say, hey, do you realize this is going on? A lot of it, and, I, and I'm not, now if it's bad enough, it should still be brought to the commission. It depends what it is. And so I think that's an issue now that it's in front of you. The commission has to make that determination. Is this is the overloading an issue that the company should be held accountable for? Is it a driver should be held accountable for? The issue of, and I don't have the other issues directly in front of me, but I, you know, I think that's kind of where we are. I, I, we've, we already have, I mean, the industry's 
with the exception of a couple of things, the records seem to work well together as a rule most of the time. Many of the others do not. Yeah, we have special events that come up that we could utilize their services and, and back and forth. Emmett, their owner, used to keep his bikes at my shop. So, I mean, we all used to be friends, and that's, that's what yeah, I'm you know, What I see here, I share the commissioner's uh, observation, if not concern, and that is that, you know, Mr. Fields, you don't have enough people on the field to be able to police these folks. Mm -hmm. It's great to see maybe the companies are bringing to each other's attention. We, we want to encourage the companies to bring to each other's attention violations. On the other hand, who's guarding the hen house? Um, and if the if securities commission was told the people who are selling securities, well, you guys take care of any violations, the public would be at risk. So there's a balance here between companies okay. observing each other's errors and Correcting, I don't like that word in house, correcting them in house versus our obligation to protect the public. And it, when I, you know, when I saw those text messages being exchanged, and, and I thought they were you because it said Chris, but I was confused about how many complaints were against Rocket Rocket at the time. Um, I was thinking, if you guys are talking to Miss uh, Nixon like that, that's just highly inappropriate. But, um, I think there's there's a balance here between the industry said it, you know, helping to bring itself in compliance versus our obligation to protect the public and take up complaints that do come to our to our attention. Well, there's one other thing. They've seen what we've done when we had the complaint last month mm -hmm. where someone was in, in acting inappropriately and doing that. We, we actually suspended mm -hmm. their license. We suspended them from working for, I forgot exactly how long it was. So now that you've got one watching the policing the other, it really behooves me to get your license suspended for a few weeks because then I'll get all the business. So, you know, you have to look at that also when there's competition. I don't know if I don't know if that's going to mean that, that not you in particular, but you, another company, might, might want to police and might want to, to, to um, uh, bring charges. But what we got hopes. here today, though, is Mr. <clears throat> Sizemore wants to settle it out of, out of the commission, and Sprocket Rocket says, no, they're ready to go forward. Right, so and probably ready today. to go forward because if we, if we uh, say that, that Joyride has, has, viol has made some violations or whatever, that, that we may suspend his license. So yeah, but they're also at risk because there's a complaint against them. Right. So they're just as much at, at risk. Yeah. I mean, I can speak on that, too, whenever you guys are ready. I wouldn't have a problem with her coming up and, and speaking right now. Why don't you? You can stay right there. I mean, yeah. So, um, actually, the same. I, I'm just going to read an email that I sent to Billy on September 12th. It was after this whole back and forth with Chris and Emmett, and I'll just like scheme through it because I know we've been here for a long time. But it just says. Um, Here's a conversation, here's screenshots of a conversation that Emmett and Chris had over the weekend. He contacted us with photos of our carts on Broadway and claims he has seven more. Um, he continued to state if we dropped our upcoming complaint on him that he would not file his complaint against us, attaches the screenshots of the photos, which is what you guys have. And we said just to be clear, because we can't reiterate enough, any complaints that we send to you about another company is not done out of spite or competition. It's purely a precautionary measure to avoid getting us all in trouble. Um, and then I said, we go through great lengths to make sure our drivers are well trained on the rules and we're confident that our drivers are respecting the rules and regulations as they apply to LSV. Our, driver, our drivers understand that they can, we cannot afford them as a risk to our company and that they will be terminated if and will they do not follow the rules. Josh Thompson is the example below. He is the same driver who was identified in the first complaint, Patricia Nixon, and the same driver in this photo from Chris. Josh is no longer with our company. Can I interrupt you one yeah. second there? That's exactly what Mr. Henry said didn't happen in this in your company. Um, Mr. Chris, he Mr. Henry, ahead. you just said the first complaint by Miss Nixon was part of the reason Josh Thompson was discharged, and Mr. Henry stood up there and, two hours ago and said, mm -hmm. "No, he was discharged because we've solved problems before we even knew about the complaint." Correct. So now, what what's going on with your email so, here? So, well, in that sense. Josh is a bad seat overall. He didn't like to follow rules. He didn't like to be respectful Why to us. Why in your email are you telling us Josh Thompson was dismissed because of Miss Nixon's complaint? I'm saying when it, it's when Mr. well. Henry, I'm sorry, I didn't. Said it didn't happen that way. I'm sorry, I didn't clarify that. There was a collective 
set of reasons why Josh was let go. Um, I should have clarified in it. I was just saying in general, Josh was let go. He's the same driver in this picture and the picture she had before. Um, we didn't find out about the complaint. Um, Chris's pictures were taken on August 18th, I think, and he sent them to us on September 8th. So we had no idea that same, like that Josh was out of bounds as well. So it was, we had, we let him go because of the attitude that we were experiencing experiencing as staff and management. So your email to Mr. Fields on September 13th is not correct in that particular sentence? Um, well, I think he's she... not following the rules because he wasn't being respectful to us and obviously he's not being respectful to the golf cart rules and staying in bounds. So that, I didn't when actually say... He was say... dismissed because of the complaint by Ms. Nixon and I'm not going to belabor this much longer but you just said Ms. Nixon when you talked about the first complaint I, I mean, I, I just said he's our example. He was the same driver in the, who was identified in the first complaint and the same driver here. Mm -hmm. um, he's no longer with our company for these reasons. So it's just, in general, he was not following the rules. And mm -hmm. this is so, um, it's not descriptive enough for me to be able to tell you what those rules are that I was referring to. But right. our company rules is being respectful as well as following the outline map. Um, so then I did say whether or not Joy Ride wants to proceed with this complaint, we wanted you to know. And then I also attached with Billy, I said, um, as a company, we want to continue to be proactive when it comes to our drivers. And I attached all of our maps um, that were signed by our drivers. And I said, regardless of his training, he's no longer with us. And our for our company's sake, we have included all of our driver's maps that prove that these practices are in place. And so I did that on <laughs> September 12th is the email that Billy got from me with all of that. And our driver was let go immediately too when the, when the complaint was brought up. So I, that it, I'm, I'm willing to accept that. Right, I get that. But our problem with his is when um, I believe it was Mr. Mendez came up last time with the meeting, it was 72 hours before and you had violated again. So Mr. Mendez came up and said, the reason I'm here is because it was too soon. So then we just happened Jeremy is with us with the pictures to see you 12 hours later when you should have went back and probably managed your staff and handled that and you your staff 12 hours after this meeting where you were graciously right. given a 10 day suspension instead of to be served at the same time and not um, correct that driver was did not drive until the 20 the 29th was the next time they get brought in. That was his schedule that's when he came in, and that's the day the investigated investigation started, um, and, and then he was dismissed. So you apparently didn't talk to your staff about what had happened right after this meeting, because it was 12 hours later, and you were found with seven passengers he on the bike. out of town on, on, the on your car. Ms. Uh, How? Redia, yes. Um, I'm looking at the uh, iPhone picture after your email. Yes. Um, and I'm, you know, you'll have to help me out here because I, I have a hard time. I have clear photos of them. If you need. Who's saying what? So this is a picture of Mr. Sizemore's phone. Um, or? this is Emmett Martin's phone, Emmett and my Martin. phone has the screenshots of him. So we just kind of took so screenshots. Who is, who's, who said if you would, would withdraw your complaint, we will not file any complaint against you and try and report any of these complaints to each other so we can deal with it in-house. Chris did, and I'm pretty sure it's because you guys put him on that since uh, probation period and then told him that it was his second strike because the two were back to back. The probation period didn't start till the 29th, or to the, to the September 11th, or no, September 3rd. Probation started on September 28th. The driver was out of town the day of the meeting, so just the weekend, and then he was informed on the 29th. This incident happened on the 25th. So he was informed, and then there was a complaint that came September 11th. Um, we discussed it with him, and then he was terminated on the 13th. I, I guess I want to make it clear, and I, I'm speaking as the chairman, and you know I, I'm speaking on behalf of the commission, um, and you know Ms. Gustonis is here; she can correct me uh, if if this is beyond the bounds of the commission. But I think it's important that um, we make this statement so you guys understand uh, if you bring a complaint to us we're we're going to hear it so i don't you should not be um, 
bartering complaints amongst one another after you file them. If you file a complaint with Mr. Fields with the TLC that um, and, then, and then offer to withdraw it to the person you're complaining against, that, that to me, I didn't make that um, offer until today. I, I understand. Let me finish. No, it's that to me uh, is improper. Well, the complaint wasn't filed at that point, and because was he was waiting for us to withdraw ours, I was ours. waiting for him to handle it in house, and he's the one who told me to bring it to the. Commission. You know what I don't like is you're you're bartering with them. If we won't bring our eight complaints against you, if you'll drop your one complaint against us, and that's in your text message. Well, I was hoping that they would, we, we could work it out in house, and that's about. It's just, it, that's the point. Mindset. The point I'm trying to make is if if you genuinely believe the other company is violating our rules and you decide and you decide to bring it to us then it's out of your hands yes. we can choose to go forward with that complaint you don't have the capacity to barter it away and if the other company that you're complaining against has complaints against your company they can bring those complaints too but but you should not be bartering amongst one another about your your complaints. I'm just trying to find another resolution, another way of re resolution. I mean, you can resolve difference in business and strategies, but you can't resolve something. I, I, this is a misdemeanor; it's not a felony. But it's like saying, "Okay, you have a drunk driving offense. I know you're drunk driving, and I have one. Let's forget about it." And you can't barter that away. Okay, it was just my understanding that's what we were supposed to work on, but I apologize. So if I miscommunicated, yeah, I apologize for that. Again, the, the issue always is if there are, for instance, in one of the industries that we regulate, we saw today an issue of who's up in the carriage stand and who's not. So the issue is practices, operations. Clearly, if everybody's response, as far as I'm concerned, the industry should, should report if they see other violations. By the same token, you have to make determination on the street, I think, is, you know, it, what was it? Was it a violation? Was it not a violation? But once we get it, what the, we do as a staff, we review it, we compare it to the ordinance. Sometimes we call legal and say, what do you think? Does this rise? Can Is this provable? And if there's evidence there that, that there's potential of a violation, then we bring it to the commission. What are your thoughts? Uh, that's the chairperson too. What are your thoughts though? Let's say Mr. Sizemore observes one of Sprocket Rockets that's out of zone and he and rather than filing a formal complaint he calls up is it, is it Mr. Martin calls up Mr. Martin and said, Hey, one of your drivers has crossed over on the wrong road or is on the wrong is it, ah, any problem with that? I don't see any problem with okay. that. Well, and we actually just recently did that on September 22nd with him. Um, we caught another one of his drivers out of bounds. We didn't file a complaint. We just sent it to him. And Chris said, is that today? And he said, thanks, we'll let him go. And Emmett said, just now. And Chris said, WTF. So we didn't file a complaint. That was easy enough that we are policing it ourselves and trying to work with him. But it was just, it's that last one, seven people on a, on a golf cart endangering the safety right after the meeting that we just had when he had a very gracious probation period to be just suspended for 10 days. All right, Mr. Sizemore, do you agree that you had, you, you, you said you fired that driver? Yeah. He and like he had that. seven riders on a five-person cart? Yes. And that was on August 25th of this year? That's what the, yes. it seems. We have the photos too if you want to see right. it. No, no, I just <laughs> want to ask him if he's going to admit that that's what happened with one of his carts and one of his drivers. You don't have to worry about the specific date, but basically you oh, fired the guy because he had five, seven people on a five-person yes. cart. He violated, yeah. yes, he violated the rules. What about you guys? Did you? Uh, yeah, it's the same driver from the, and that's the email that Billy got Thompson right again? after, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it, once and I'm not again, go there about Josh Thompson. What, you know, <laughs> no, that's you, okay. But uh, once but, again, but he he was fired because of a violation that they brought against you. <clears throat> he was fired for his unruly behavior that we experienced, but both of those complaints we did not know about until afterwards. Okay. okay um, yeah. But but it, the complaint that's made here that Mr. Sizemore brought, you admit that happened. Same driver already gone. Yep. Okay. So we've got findings of, I mean, we got admissions by both parties that they violated the, uh, the rules. And I, I do want to ask, I believe this is our first um, violation, our first actual formal complaint. Um, this is Joyride's third right back to back. I mean, and I don't want to. Your first your was about an today. hour ago, <laughs> two hours. Oh, yeah, the same. Sorry, you're right. No, yeah, you're right. I feel like this is the first time we've actually had to be up here to defend ourselves, so. A second time. 
Yeah, the first day, sorry. <laughs> uh, the way things are going, I, I, I don't know how many times both of y'all will be up here anyway. Unless, I know. You guys got to get some control of your Well, drivers. we are. We have our, our um, all of our things in place. Like I said, I sent Billy immediately as soon as we found it. But, I mean, we also went back and looked at videos, like I said, from 2016, where they said they had the geomap location already on their carts. And, again, he told you on August 24th that he was still working on putting those on his carts. And we had GPSs on the vehicles with the geo fencing we didn't have, that wasn't available at the time, and then we implemented it. But I believe this is working itself out. The, company, the one thing I will give Not credit yet. To, we haven't rendered punishment yet. I, I will give credit to the, to the companies in forward. general. Of the companies that operate, I have I have received, and I couldn't give you exact number or who it did what, but we are getting more self-report quick. We just had XYZ out of the zone. We had a problem. He's been counseled. In other words, they're self-reporting back. And, you know, I'll get an email at 11 o'clock at night. I'm not speaking direct to any of these. I'm just saying I do believe that the companies are making efforts to be better so, to self-report to, to self-report and to and to deal with them themselves in other words if you find part of what our issue is goes back to the compliance issue we want them to comply what are you going to do to control drivers what are you going to control, control vehicles you can't possibly control all of your drivers but what you can do is deal with a problem as soon as you know you have a problem and, and the geofencing as soon as we've seen the geofencing pass the boundary we've submitted to billy and we, we let them go instantly <coughs> and you know that's what we're working towards and you know the communication between our companies is, is, is getting better this was just one of those I believe this is hopefully one of the last ones that we bring between each, each other. Hopefully we can self-communicate. I mean, we do have video also of all three of his golf carts going the wrong way on the roundabout, which was in an email from Emma and Danielle exchange. So, I mean, there, there is a lot, and we didn't complain against that one, but there's... <laughs> You're yeah, being exactly. watched. You're both being watched. I mean, it's easy It's easy to watch. It's easy to watch when they're clearly breaking the rules in front of everyone. Gentlemen, having heard all the testimony. <laughs> uh, and I just want to be clear, I, I don't think there's anything inappropriate about picking up the phone or emailing um, a peer company to say, hey, one of your drivers is out of zone. Um, here's a screenshot or whatever. Um, but. It, it crosses the line when you say, hey, uh, I know you got a complaint against me. Uh, if you dismiss your complaint, I won't bring this complaint against you. That, that um, if, if, if that is done, that, um, I mean, it's not, uh, it's not like you're asking for money, but it certainly sounds like extortion. Um, and that's why, also, why I wanted to bring it to Billy's attention right away. That, I mean, Chris was trying to get us to revoke ours. We weren't interested. And <coughs> Emma even says, like, you have no evidence on us. You're wasting our time trying to blackmail me. So, and I agree with you. We were not. To, to discuss that too. And he told me to bring it to the commission because I told mm -hmm. him I didn't want to. This isn't something I want to do. Who's he? Emmett he's Martin. He's yeah. the owner. You. Our communication. Yeah. Okay. Our communication back and forth. Oh. He's the one who told me to, to bring it here because I didn't want to. Right. So I was just hoping that we could. Because you were trying to blackmail us to revoke ours so you won't get in trouble again. I'm just trying to have a resolution. And just like he sent me one uh, of another driver, and then there's a cruising driver too. It's been in our office communication, which has been reported back to Billy. All right, well, I've, I think we've heard enough. Um, I know it's 440, and we do uh, need to make a uh, decision with regard to. It sounds like we've combined the complaints here the one that Joyride brought against Sprocket Rockets and the Sprocket Rocket complaint against Joyride. So, um, would any of the commissioners like to make a motion? I'm, I couldn't hear you. I can't hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just making sure that there was an, there was a clear finding in terms of the, the being outside of the zone allegation against Sprocket Rocket. We were just. Well, I know Mr. McNally had some sure questions for. Uh, about that. Yeah, I thought there were submissions by okay. representatives of both parties. Okay. You don't dispute that you you don't dispute that Mr. Thompson, Thompson was out of zone, no. as indicated in the complaint against right. you. Okay. Um, would legal help us with specifically the <coughs> statute, not statute, but the regulation that each of these applies to? 
and then we can make a motion. Uh, are you okay? Just actually hopping out of the zone one. And then there's one that says that everyone in the cart has to have the seatbelt. Yeah, but I think this is an overloaded cart. I guess. Same thing. Yeah, okay. Is. What is that? Uh, hang on just a second. I'm looking. Billy's looking too. <coughs> Operating area is 373380. The issue of seat belts will be under 300, assuming that there has to be seat belts for everyone in the vehicle, which means use the seat belts. I think we also actually passed a rule. Shall not an LSV used in passenger transportation service shall not drive or transport more passengers than there are proper seating right. for, excluding the driver of the vehicle, and at no time shall the driver allow any passenger to ride in an area of the vehicle that was not specifically designed as a seat. There's also what number is that? And although it does say provided that no event shall the number of passengers in an SUV exceed, exceed seven. Exceed seven? Mm -hmm. No individual may be transport this is your rule. <laughs> may be transported in a low speed vehicle, including the driver, unless wearing a seat belt while work while in the area. So it, you by re, by your rule, the ordinance indicate the ordinance assumes that if you have seat belts in the vehicle, they're going to be used. The rule amplifies that that if you're going to be in there, you have to have a seat belt on. The overloading would apply if you had more than so if you had if you had more people than it's than it has seat belts for. Yep. So what's the rule Agreed. number? The rule says everybody has to that have seat belts. Three, 360. Um, Just 360? 673, 360 is the, the okay. overloading and, and 380. And seat belts? Uh, no, th those are from the rules. Uh, I'm reading from the, the provisions of the Metropolitan Code, and Billy's reading from your rules. Right, right. Your, it's just seat belt requirement. <laughs> yes. Do we answer the question? But it's there. So you're about to make a motion, correct? I think. Um, <laughs> all right, I make a motion that uh, I'm going to make two motions. The first motion is going to be a finding that Joy Wright has violated Ordinance 673.360. Uh, factually, they had. I think it's 373. 673.380, if you're talking about. No, I'm sorry. Joy Ride. Um, 673360 is the overloading. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry for interrupting. I'm getting no, everyone I'm messed up. Messed up I'm today. starting again. I would make a motion of a finding that Joy Ride has violated Ordinance 673.360 in that there were seven passengers in a five passenger vehicle. Well, uh, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. My second motion is motion that. passes. No, no, sorry. Sprocket Rocket has violated Ordinance 673.380 and that there was a driver out of the designated zone. Second. Set. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion passes. I'm going to make a motion that both companies have had some sanctions imposed upon them uh, at the current time and that uh, those sanctions. Joyride doesn't have any current sanctions. Do they not? Hmm. Still on probation? Pro oh, probation. Well, then I'll, I'll leave it. No, they're off. They're off. Is Joyride they're on probation, probation or anything now, right now? That was a probation. This happened before the probation. This happened before the probation. Rocket Rockets is now on a 90-day yeah. probationary period. With the opportunity to come back in a month to show right. us. The minutes okay. might show that. I'll leave it open for discussion about, uh, or I'll, I'll hold off on any motion regarding Which sanctions at this time. Show that, right? Anybody's got thoughts or input? Thank you. you know, I'm, I think that this was a personality issue. Person, I'm just saying, and I, I would like to dismiss it. But that's well, we've already on a violation. I um, understand, but not impose any sanctions. All right, let me make it simple. That. You can find a violation and take no disciplinary action. No disciplinary. But you need to again. Whenever you're doing this, I appreciate it, or our litigators appreciate it if there is an appeal, if you articulate for the record the reason why you may be doing something a little bit differently than you have in the past. Make a motion about Sprocket Rocket that there be no further sanctions imposed on them because it involved the same uh, employee, Josh Thompson, and they have taken remedial action to terminate Mr. Thompson. Second. 
say, yeah. I, I, th I think that we should consider probation for Joyride. I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> I thought I'd take it piece by piece. <laughs> I'm a legal counsel down there holding me very tight on a tight ring. Sorry. Anyway, that's my motion for regarding Sprocket Rocket. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. It's September. Uh, Joyride. I'll make a motion that Joyride be placed on 30 days probation, and at the next meeting we get some verification about the um, GPS fencing, the GPS devices. I want some real proof that these things are actually in place because it's been brought to our attention today by some credible witnesses that uh, there seemed to have been a lot of very laxed, very laxed uh, response to the previous sanctions that were opposed to a driver who for one reason was out of town or whatever. And I don't mean to be so wordy, but I think the 30 days probation and then with them showing up at the next meeting with some proof that all these things are in place uh, to this commission would be appropriate. I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Aye. Aye.